Bonjour everyone, today I'm super pumped because I'm taking you to the world famous food city of Curitiba in southern Brazil. This city is absolutely amazing. This city is made up of European influences including Italians, Ukrainians, Germans and Polish. Curitiba is known for its legendary Brazilian fogo de chao which is meat cooked vertically over flaming ashes. It's a place that you have to visit for street food, lots of street food, lots of gardens, attractions and when you're done make your way south south about an hour and a half and visit Blumenau, the beer capital of Brazil. It is absolutely mm, delicious having one of those beers there. Now without further ado, welcome to Curitiba. We are driving from Sao Paulo, the biggest city in Brazil, to Curitiba, yes. the cultural hub of southern Brazil in the state of Parana. It's a five hour drive. So if you guys don't know about Brazil, this is a massive country. If you want to go to different cities, you either do these type of drives or you have to fly domestically. Flying domestically, you don't get to see anything. You just go to the airport, you land in there, that's it. So we like to hit the road. I'm a big road trip type of guy. This place was founded uh, as a gold mine uh, yes. camp in 1654, something like that. Yes. And amazing food. Amazing. It's in the mountains, right, man? Amazing food, amazing uh, coffee. Okay. As the place is always rain and cold, they yeah. have good food. I'm sure it's going to rain. Yeah, good ribs. Good ribs? Good ribs. Oh my God, I can't wait. Yes. So today what we're doing is we're driving from here to there. It's 7 in the morning. That's when the, the rental car opens up. So we're going to get there around noon. Yes. Then we're going to eat, we're gonna explore, we're gonna be there for 36 hours. I'm excited to see the journey, I can't wait to see Brazil from a different perspective. I've only seen the concrete jungle, so yeah. it's gonna be completely different. It's gonna be awesome, I'm excited. I'm excited too, let's go. Let's go. This is our car? That's our car. The Jeep, huh? Jeep. Yeah. Amazing. Very nice. So I think the Jeep compass is too small for my bags. We have three carry-ons in my big bag. But it fits, right? Good, it fits, it fits. I love this car, dude. This car's sick. Dude, right in the car was a mission. Yes. Welcome to Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> it really was crazy, guys. I mean, yes. between getting to the airport, getting the shuttle, getting here, they actually had to put a hold in my car, like a $5,000 in case the car gets stolen, but it's all good. I didn't pay for it. But yeah, five hour drive. It's raining. It rains in southern Brazil like crazy, right? And Sao Paulo as well. Curitiba and Sao Paulo always rain. If it doesn't rain, you're not in Curitiba. Right now we're just uh, getting to the main road, which is Regis Bittencourt uh, Road that leads to Curitiba. So it's gonna be about four hours and a half. Okay. Four and a half hours. And we explored Sao Paulo for roughly 36 hours, maybe a little more. I arrived like at eight in the morning the first day I got here. Yes. You've been four times. What I did was a little bit or a lot. You, uh, you mean I have been four times? You, you've been up of no, like no. thousands of times. oh, thousands no, times, okay. four times, no, <laughs> four times maybe last year. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms of the things to do and see, we did a lot, right? Man, we did a lot for 36 hours. Yeah, we yeah. did a lot. Yeah, and I mean, people believe it like it's a concrete jungle, so there's not like much to do. But exactly. actually, yeah, it's not only about food, but like art, culture, museum, exactly. church, you know. Lots of art, murals yeah, everywhere. Exactly, lakes, uh, parks, you know, gardens, and very it's green. It's awesome. But people tend to say, oh no, there's only shopping mall. Yeah, you know, yeah, no. people think that. Man, Sao Paulo is awesome. Sao Paulo is awesome. Oh. We explored uh, Liberdade. We explored so many different areas. Uh, the food was phenomenal. I, I don't know how much we ate, but we ate we like, ate a lot. like 10 dishes a day. Exactly. More than that. Yeah, you probably Crazy. gained like two kilos, right? I think Already. I did. I don't feel that good. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank God there's like a gym at the hotel. <laughs> I never attended it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if you attended, but I, I attended once and it was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm very sleepy. It's almost eight in the morning. Yes. We'll be there by noon. Hopefully we'll eat some delicious lunch. Yeah, restaurant opens uh, at 11.30. It's well known for like, uh, they call the uh, uh, wood fire. The wood fire. Wood fire, yeah. So they basically, they cook on the ground. Yeah, on the ground and well, it's uh, Costella Fogo de Chão. I can't wait. Yeah, the Don't, Costilla, the ribs. The only problem we're gonna have there is gonna be really wet. It's gonna be a rainy day. Yes, raining day, cold, and man, it's right at the beginning of summertime in, in Brazil and it's 17 Celsius, it's crazy, you know? No, it's perfect. I like this weather. No, so I do too, but it's just unusual temperature uh, for Brazil summertime. But I, I love it. It's great to eat. 
Right, so the one thing I love eating in the morning here in Brazil is pau de queijo. So it's bread with cheese and this one is full of cheese. Yesterday I had like three different ones. One of them had almost nothing. The other one was delicious and one of them was huge. But look at this. Wow. Oh, this one's the best. Good, huh? Mmm. Wow. I love how grainy it is. Yes. It's like soft and crumbly. Man, this highway, Raposo Tavares, and we're about to take the Rodovia Regis Bittencourt. Regis Bittencourt. You were saying this was a day, like super dangerous, right? It's super dangerous, but now they kind of like remodeling, right? Like it was only one lane, now it's pretty nice. So now it's safe. But it used to be very dangerous, like in the 90s. But look, beautiful. Mm -hmm. So this road used to be called Death, Death Road. Road. Rodovia da Morte. And that was in the 90s? Yes. And why? Because it was one lane, right? Yeah, man, and a lot of trucks, a lot of heavy trucks, and a lot of car accident, you know? Well. And happy that things changed better, right? Yeah, yeah. And on the way, I mean, basically all we're seeing is like forests and yes. small hills. Eventually, we're deeper into the mountains. A lot of farmers. A lot of farmers. And this yes. is like the entry to real southern Brazil, right? Exactly, yes. Uh, Paraná is the name of the state, right? And But we're going to Curitiba. The entire drive is like this? Yes, churrascaria everywhere. And, uh, man, we love it. Uh, Brazilians are like meat lover, right? Yeah. So, so in case you guys don't want to go so early, you know, you want to get in the car around 9 a.m. and get there around 2, you can stop on the way and have yourself some steak, some Brazilian meat. And a lot of these places are extremely affordable, like $10, all you can eat, buffet, really amazing. I've only had meat, what, well I had real meat one time, but then I had a bunch of other stuff that was like, no, not beef, more like pork, chicken, etc. And it's all delicious. I yeah, mean, man. everything here is delicious. As we're approaching the south uh, of Brazil, man, it's gonna be a lot of meat. So be prepared, you know? It's kind of like Texas for you guys, you know? A Texas, lot of meat. Texas de Brazil. Texas de Brazil, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never seen this before. This truck has a security behind it. Basically, there's a lot of expensive stuff in there. It's very normal. Yeah? Very normal. They pay like uh, really high insurance, you know, to to protect, right, to insurance. So now this is real jungle, huh? Yes. This looks like the Amazon jungle. Yes. This is it's incredible. always rain, man. Always, always. 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 If, this, if it's not rainy, at least it's cloudy, you know? It's cloudy, yeah. It's like yeah. mist, cloud, mist. and now we're entering a huge tunnel. Tunnel number three. Yes. So lots of these? Yeah, but Brazil specializes in tunnels, man. There are a lot of tunnels, you know, because there are a lot of mountains, right? Uh, Rio has like 1,000 hills, you know? Oh, wow. And so many tunnels. We, we even have like a book that talks about the tunnels, you know? It's it, amazing. It, it's pretty cool, man. It's unique, you know? So that was three tunnels in a row. Yes. A long one, a shorter one, and the shortest one. And there's just non-stop trucks. No, and a lot of radars, man. It's a lot like of radars? Big radars, like big factory of uh, ticket, right? Yeah, it's like they make millions a year through tickets. Millions, man, millions. Wow. Yeah. But the trucks, dude, how many trucks? So many, and they're like all huge, huh? Huge, huge. Big, so crazy. big. I, I think it's like 90% trucks on this Yeah, road. it's like a, a lot of cargo, right? Cargo trucks. It's raining, we're getting hungry. Seven kilometers away, there is a restaurant called Buffalo where they serve buffalo meat. We're starving, man. Buffalo meat? Buffalo meat. I've had buffalo meat a few times. It is gamey, way gamier than regular beef, okay? Um, it's a little different, right? It's, it's just more tough. It's tougher meat. And you were saying in North Brazil, they eat only buffalo meat, right? Yeah, there's one place uh, near Belém do Pará. They serve uh, a lot of buffalo meat, man. Lots, and buffalo milk as well. Where they produce an amazing uh, cheese called queijo marajoara. So it's at the Marajo Island in Pará State. So we're about seven kilometers away. Once we get there, we're gonna go inside, quickly have a bite, and then continue. We only have roughly two hours to go. All right, guys, some bad news. Unfortunately, the restaurant, the Buffalo restaurant is closed. They don't open till noon, and right now it's only 10.45. So we're gonna skip the Buffalo restaurant. Hopefully we see some other vendors or something on the road. 
but it's getting really bad. It's getting really, really wet. That's one thing you have to know is that when you come to Curitiba, it doesn't matter what time of year you come, it's gonna rain in Curitiba. Yes. <laughs> like my boy Mark was here with with uh, Guilla and they rained every second, right? Yes, like flood, man, flood. People from Curitiba, they are watching us. You guys know what, what we're talking about, right? Yes. Oh my God, what happened? Crash. The, the car ran into the to the hill. Wow. Yes. It's slippery, man. A lot of rain, you have to slow down, be careful, you know? That's actually the second car we saw off the road. The other one must have just veered off, but he's stuck. He can never get out. To get a tow, tow truck out here, impossible. Well, it's gonna take forever, right? It's gonna take, yeah, it's gonna take forever. Yeah. That's why you gotta be really careful on this slippery road. Right now, it's really pouring down. I mean, yes. we're going actually like half the speed limit. It's gonna take us a little longer to get there, but always safer than sorry. We just decided to stop, see if we can have some jackfruit, banana, coconut water, you know. I love to stop and get some fruit, some, yeah, some coconut water, or, or even garapa, like caldo de cana, the sugar cane. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's raining, we got undercover. Okay. Look at this, bananas. So there's banana plantations in the area. I order coconut water for us. Oh yeah? Yeah, thirsty. There's bananas, but there's also heart of palm, like amazing heart of palm. And look at these. So this is honey. Honey, right? Yeah, look. Oh, whoa. Look at the size. Obrigado. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Mm. Really refreshing. It's really amazing. We're on the highway at a, a vendor here, a fruit shop. It's plantation in the area. We have jackfruit, we have papaya, pineapple, bananas, heart liquors, of palms. Heart of palms. Yeah, honey, mm. coffee, a lot of stuff. Oh, this is so refreshing. Wow. And what's the cost? Probably super cheap. Yeah. What? Cada coco. Yeah, like a dollar. Less than a dollar. Less than a dollar. I can't believe how much is in here. Never ending. Almost like half a liter. Oh my God. For sure. It's really refreshing, but definitely know that you're gonna go to the bathroom soon. Yes. We need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Just roasted nuts, huh? Yeah. I love it. Mmm. It's good, salty. So salty. Yeah. Good. Very, very, very good snack, right? Yes. Easy, I like quick. It. Yeah. So basically, you stop here, buy some honey, buy some heart of palm, try some cocoa. Banana, apple. Banana, apple. And they also have these liquors, all right? So if yeah. you want to, you can buy it. There's more like factory stuff. This is not local. No. But this is the best. Yeah, honey. The honey. How much How much for this? Hey, one one dollar. No. Yeah. 20. 20. 20, so four US dollars for yeah. this? Mm -hmm. It's good, a lot. Good deal? Good deal. Yeah. Roasted, right? Like dark coffee. And for sure it has a lot of sugar. For sure, huh? Very sweet. Molto dolce. Molto dolce. Extremely sweet. Yeah. They love the coffee at this. I mean you can really taste the coffee though. That's what I like about it. It's not like but it's not like coating it that's bad coffee. Yeah. But I mean it's good. Oh. Obrigado. Boa viagem, Deus te acompanhe. Obrigado. There are a lot of places like this? A lot of places, man. On the way to, like all the roads in Brazil pretty much, a lot of fruit stand and you can buy craft food and honey, heart of palm. It's, uh, it's an attraction. I like it, man. It's so fun and delicious food. Some quick, nice, healthy snacks. Peanuts. You need to get some? Yeah, yeah. I like it. Obrigado. Sweet and salty at the same time. Ah, yeah? Que delícia. Mm -hmm. Much more salty. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I love it. Mm. Banana chips, right? Mm -hmm. It's like French fries. It's like Kerala, India. Mm -hmm. Same. Mm -hmm. oh, amazing. Let's go. Let's go. This lady here is so nice. She's letting me try the heart of palm. Mmm! Not too bomb. Delicious. How much for the whole thing? One to get out, watch. 
É 10 reais. 10. 10? 11 and 2 dollars. 2 dollars for that? Wow, that is too nice. And the heart of palm, oh, I love it. It's crunchy, super juicy. Wow, bro. That was awesome. Very good. You were so nice. And now I'm awake. Yeah, me too. Yes, I need it. This is why I love road trips. You really have to experience the country. Stop, you know, interact with locals, eat their food, you know, support them, buy what they're selling, right? They live right here. They live right there, right? Yeah, right there. In the middle of nowhere. Yes. Incredible. Well, and the day's clearing up a little bit, right? A little bit. It was raining like crazy when we got there. It slowed down and now we can see the sun. And we have roughly an hour and 10 minutes. Yes. David, welcome to Curitiba. Of course, it's rainy and it's normal. And man, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna see a lot of uh, cool places like the Botanical Garden, a lot of good food, and I'm very excited to show you around. So we have 36 hours to explore Curitiba, which should be enough to get a sense of what this place is about. Lots of food, lots of attractions, lots of amazing meat. And yeah, that was the day, guys. We drove five hours from Sao Paulo all the way to Curitiba. It's a long drive, you know, five hours with rain. Please be careful, drive, you know, moderately if you're hungry you can stop at lots of different restaurants hopefully they're open so most of them open around 11 30 12 and if not make it here for lunch and you can also stop at some of those vendors buy some fruits uh heart of palm try some of their coffee you know just real local experience you really get to see the countryside and what this place is all about wet curitiba brazil today i'm so pumped because i'm having a churrasco brasileiro like a Brazilian barbecue, if you guys don't know about this, this is called fogo de chao, meaning they basically make ash on the floor, they make a big fire, then they cook vertically ribs, beef ribs, for eight hours. This is amazing. This place is called Rosa Brazil, which means like pink Brazil. We're right outside of Curitiba, about 20 minutes outside. There's a family restaurant. It's really cozy inside. They also have a terrace, and then over there to the right, that is where they cook the meats. We're also gonna see them cut some pork, we're gonna have some salad, we're gonna try some local wine. If you guys don't know, there's wine in this area of Brazil. I've never tried Brazilian wine. I'm excited, I'm hungry. Yo, let's dig in. Let's go. Uh, in fact, David, uh, we are in uh, Curitiba. It sounds like we're outside of uh, Curitiba. It's just a neighborhood of Curitiba, right? It's, uh, man, this place is amazing. Uh, actually, not only beef ribs, but look, chicharron, right, which is the torresmo, right, like pork cracklings. We have panceta, and over there, the the main guy, right, the, the beef ribs. Uh, usually eight hours cooking, roasting, uh, supposed to be like 32 vertical uh, skewer, right, like grill. Today only four because it's raining, so not that busy, but man, it's still amazing, a lot of food. Look at that. The amount of salt yeah. is so good. Yeah, Cuatro Bajas. Cuatro Bajas. Cuatro Bajas. Yeah, no, it's a neighborhood in Curitiba named Cuatro Bajas. Okay. That's where he's like, he's gonna finish the the cooking process, right? Yeah. And now it's pretty much ready. So you just walk in now and he's gonna cut it for you right here, right now. Yeah, so basically he keeps it hot there. So exactly. when somebody's ready to come, exactly. they come over here, you can get beans, rice, uh, cassava, what else? Uh, arroz carreteiro, which oh is a, a rice fillet of uh, sausage, beans, you know. Oh, man. It's a typical fruit from Rio Grande do Sul State. The reason why he brought this big uh, chunk of meat, because he's finished the other one. Perfect. So he's getting ready for the new customers. I, I think you and me are going to eat an entire one. Yeah, and look this, man. Oh, my this God. Is, this is totally Brazil. Yeah, this is like, this wood is the fire. way. Yeah, this, this is, is the fire. best way. Slow food, go yeah. for food. Wood fire is always the best way to do barbecue, yeah, right? Yeah, and... He also has pork there, right? Exactly. And one of the reasons why this place is such a success, man, because it's run by the family. The owner is here, his daughter, his wife. It can't get wrong. Dude, I'm excited. I need to eat we're, right now. We're excited and we're starving. I know. <laughs> That's the problem. When we're doing this stuff, we just get so hungry just looking at the food. Yes. It's like, whoa. Yes. And then we also have salads over here. So we have, you know, some spice. Yeah, we have like mashed potatoes. Tolo, lettuce, tomatoes, uh, carrots, onions, eggplant, yuca, and watermelon potato for dessert. salad, watermelon for dessert, exactly. All right, let's start. Simple and good, let's go. Let's go. And by the way, the restaurant is packed inside. Yes. Inside, packed, outside, a little cold. That's why there's only two people out there. We're gonna eat outside. 
Let's do it. I'm actually very excited to try this wine. I've never tried Brazilian wine. First time. They don't really export it so much, right? Mm. Oh, wow. It's a young, fruity wine. Super fruity. Merlot. Mm. This is from a place here called Familia Fardo. They make uh, artisanal wines. Man, people don't know, but uh, Brazil uh, won a competition in 2016, the best uh, white wine. I'm not sure if it was Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Bento Gonçalves state, uh, city, which is in Rio, Rio Grande do Sul state. And we won a competition. A lot of people don't know that Brazil produced such a good wine, white and red wine as well. And this is the owner? He's the owner, Andrews. He's Andrews. He's barbecue, man. Barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue all day. I can eat it all, man. I want it, the whole thing. Whole thing. The costella. The costella. The ribs. The ribs are the best. The ribs yes. are the best. Yeah. So what's the price? Uh, Sixty-four ninety reais per person. All you can eat. Okay. That means if you if you can handle eating like kilos of uh, meat, of meat, you can. So meat salad sixty-four ninety. So like fifteen and, U.S. dollars. Yeah. For unlimited drinks are separate, obviously, but and, that's that's a deal. And the side orders, right? Yeah. Beans, rice, um, yuca, everything. Cassava, everything there. Everything there. It's basically buffet. Exactly. It's a buffet. Amazing. It's a place, man, for you to to hang out with, with your family. Yeah. Bring your family. Spend out. Hours here eating, having a good time. I know? love the weather too. Yeah, weather's good. That's why people eat a lot of uh, well, ribs, meat, yeah. meat, you know, to keep you warm. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, so how does it work? Obviously, just like a buffet. Get your plate right here. Like I said before, got the beans, got some rice. I'm gonna get some rice a little bit. So, frijoles, obviously, black beans. I love it. Get some of that with the rice. I'm getting not that much of this because I want to eat a lot of ribs. This is ribs rice. Ribs rice. And then over here? Uh, pork. Oh, this is pork? This is like almost like marinated pork. Wow. Yeah, like panceta, right? Panceta. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of cassava. I love cassava. If you guys are from like Venezuela, Colombia, this is called yuca. Yes. Yuca. And then the last thing I'm gonna get from here is this. Because you said it's amazing. It's like a mash, right? Wow. Yeah. So different, huh? So farofa. Yes, many of flowers sometimes. Uh, they cook with garlic, onions. Uh. So then, next thing you do is you ask him for the meat. Yeah, look at this big guy. He starts chiseling it down. So basically, he uses electric saw. I am so excited, so excited. I'm gonna start off with the chicharron. I love it. Pork rinds. Mm. It's actually pork belly. Mmm. Below that layer. Meat and fat. The best part about this for me is the fat, but people love the skin. Look at that crispy. Oh my god. Remember, this is pork. It's juicy. Mmm. I eat this in Miami, but it is so different. And the chunks, like how big it is. Mmm. Oh God, it's oily, it's crunchy, it's jelly. This will blow your socks off, guys. If you like pork, if you're a meat eater, wow. Mmm. Oh mm. Wow. The meat and the fat went down really fast. The fat was like butter, the chunkiness and the crunchiness of the skin, the best. And then here, we also have pineapple. So this is pineapple that was on the salad of a follow chow, right? Mmm. <clears throat> Whoa, a little smoky. So much flesh. It's like falls apart. It's almost like a little spongy. At the same time, very juicy. Amazing. Dude, the wine's amazing, but the- you like the food? I love the food. I just had the pineapple, blew me away, man. Yeah, yeah. And this rice you said has uh, uh, beef? Ribs rice. Ribs rice. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saúde. Saúde. E aqui tem que, tem que ver você falar em português. Falar em brasileiro. Exactamente, brasileiro. Oh, so good. 
The pineapple? Oh, oh, amazing, like smoky, juicy. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. You have to eat the ribs, the caramelized pumpkins with the farofa, which is the manioc flour, all together. Now I see. Look. Mm. Sweet, crunchy. Sweet, crunchy, oily, salty. Oh wow. Juicy. The pumpkin. Oh, the best, man, the best. Rafa, let's dig in, Rafa. Salad. <laughs> it's called vaca tolada. It's with uh, yellow pepper, uh, red pepper. Oh, I love it. Potato. Vaca tolada. Yeah. It's kind of like beef brown. That's why it's a tolada, because it's kind of like, almost like brown. Dude. This is the best beef I've ever had. So tasty. So tasty, so much texture. This, oh my god. This is just the beginning. Welcome to Curitiba. Now you know in Curitiba. Look at this, guys. Look at the rib. Look how amazing this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, mm -hmm. it just falls apart. So the top is crunchy, the skin. Then the middle is like gelatin. You have a little bit of like muscles in here and some bones. You just have to pull them out like that. Yeah, that you get rid of it. But then you just jump in. Mm. My man, I gotta say, this is the best thing man. that was ever invented on mm -hmm. planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look, it just breaks. Mm. And beef ribs are so much bigger than pork ribs. You can eat with the silverware, man. I'm sorry. Mm. This is a type of meat that you have to eat by hand, you know, with the hand. Look at that. So the skin, the fat, Obrigado. and the meat right here. This is the perfect weather to eat this type of food. 100 percent You know, mm -hmm. cold, mm -hmm. raining. Mmm. Obrigado. Quite a Obrigado. Obrigado. Napkins. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. The flavors. The smokiness. Mm -hmm. The salt. Wow. And this, the skin, has so much salt. Mm -hmm. So crunchy, so salty. Yes. Mm. So delicious. And this, these like cows, they're from the area. Mm -hmm. This isn't brought in from some factory no, in no, the middle of Brazil. Port, no. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> this is basically homey food. Mm -hmm. In home food. Home food. Brazilian home food. Wow. This is like why I came to Brazil, bro. Yeah, it's like, you know, your parents or your grandmother, some mm. of your relatives cooking for you, right? And exactly. For your, and for your family. I am blown away. That's We're the purpose of this place, you know, like make yourself at home. Yeah. Like we're just talking with the owner and, and man, it, it seems like we know the guy forever, you know? Mm -hmm. Cause it's so cozy, right? So, so cozy. cozy. At the end, you start mixing mm -hmm. things. You know, the rice, the beans, the far farro, this thing. Oh my god, too much. Man, I, I'm, I'm impressed the farofa is so crunchy, huh? It's so good. Mmm. Mmm. You can't stop eating. No. All right, my friends, we're going for another rib each. Look at this. Another round. Another round. Of ribs. Get the, the biggest the one. Big one? Oh the big one? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, Look at get this. the big one. This is huge. Look. What? All right, my friend, so how do you do it? Like this. Just go in. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. So good. Each layer is different. Mm -hmm. Some parts fatty, some parts meaty, some parts super salty. And some parts like crispy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the skin's crispy. Different textures and flavor. Man, look at that. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. I know I'm a carnivore. I can never give this up. Mm. So in terms of meat, this is like the thing you have to eat, right? Amazing. In Curitiba, mm -hmm. you have oh, to eat this. Oh yeah, you have to eat. The I south. I would say in the south. Mm. Curitiba, Florianópolis. Florianópolis is more like seafood, but Curitiba in Porto Alegre. Porto Alegre? We're talking about the capitals of the, uh, the, south. the south, right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. the south is right next to Uruguay. You know, Argentina's Argentina right there. So they mm. have this culture. You know, meaty, a salad for each other. Mm. There is like a huge influence, right, of the Argentine, Argentines and um, Uruguayans. Mm -hmm. They are sadder, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, every second the guy comes over here 
and checks, and then he checks, and he's finally ready, he pulls it out, he takes off all the, the actual ribs, the bones, yeah. and then he puts it inside. He leaves it in there, when somebody's ready, they get it, it's hot. So good. Some parts a little bit salty, right? More salty. That's the best. I love it. Mm. I'm a meat lover. Are you a meat lover? I know. Mmm. And certain parts are like butter. Mm hmm So tender. Mmm. And juicy. Juicy. With mm -hmm. the fat. Mm hmm Then you have here the meat, and you have a little bit of salt, more fat. Obviously the crispy part fell off. Some bones as well. Look. Mm -hmm. I like this part, it's like kind of sticking into the bones. That's the best. Mm -hmm. any, any meat that's attached to the bones? The best. Mm. Ribs look really pop. And the biggest difference between this and like American ribs is that we like to condiment it a lot with barbecue. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. sauce and then we cook. Here, no, it's just salt and then obviously vertical position yeah. under the smoke for eight hours. Not, not comparing, but I think in the United States, most of the time it's more like overcooked, right? Or like over roasted some places mm -hmm. but there's no reason to compare it's just the culture you know it's just the the style the way they cook everyone's different you know oh my god look at that oh beautiful we've been eating for like 30 minutes straight straight non-stop mm. i think we're overdoing it but it's okay mm -hmm. i'm enjoying it Raja Brazil. when you come to places like this you want to really experience you know you're paying 15 dollars you should eat. You should really mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. Focus more into eat the protein, right? The meat. Yeah, yeah. More meat and less carbo. So you go for round two? Round two for sure, because when you're in a buffet and all you can eat and the food is delicious, why not? We're not used to this food uh, anywhere in Brazil, you know? Uh, abacaxi, pineapple. Pineapple is good, that uh, helps uh, you to digest. David, this is something special. It's a pineapple with sugar and cinnamon. So you kind of like sprinkle on it and it becomes a dessert. It is a dessert, right? Yes. Okay, now we're ready. <laughs> mm. It's good, huh? Very good. Wow. Here in South Brazil, obviously we have a huge mix of Germans, Italians, you know, Western Europeans and we have beer, lots of beer, beer culture. We're actually going to Blumenau in a few days and that's like the beer capital or you know German capital of this part of Brazil. They hosted Oktoberfest in like the 1800s. Really amazing and this is Patagonia. This is actually not from Brazil though. This is from Patagonia, it's from Bariloche, but it's a really good craft beer. Oh, nice and crisp, it's a Pilsen, right? Yeah, Pilsen, 5.2% alcohol. Oh, delicious. But, back to the main event. Can't stop eating this. So the ribs, but I wanted to try this first. Eggplant, right? Mmm. This is like a salo eggplant. It's like super, oh, a little spicy, smoky. Brinjo, man, my favorite. I'm a big eggplant guy. Oh, dude, they put chilies in here. <laughs> you see it right here. Mm-hmm. Mm. The best. I gotta say, I haven't had this much meat in my life. This much? Well, maybe one time I followed a chow in Miami, but that was like a lot of different cuts of meat. This is straight costello. Costello, which is the ribs, right? Crunchy, meaty, salty. Wow. Just so good. Like, never ending. Mm. I think we guys should do is definitely mix the ribs like some of the meat and the fat and get some of this pumpkin delicious it's like sweet pumpkin oh man this pumpkin is fantastic I had a little bit right now here we go guys sweet mushy a little dense mmm mix with the saltiness this is the best combination ever and wash out down a little beer. And wow, it is starting to pour again. Remember, when you come over here, Curitiba, you're gonna get lots of rain. Rain every day. You have a rain jacket, huh? Yeah. They have a glass of a red wine. Yeah, this is perfect for red wine. Yeah. What do they call you? Boca de lagarto. Boca de lagarto. 
Boca de lagarto. <laughs> If you're the lizard, where's the thing? <laughs> Do not miss out on mixing the pumpkin with the meat. The saltiness and the sweetness combined, wow, and I love pumpkin. Mm -hmm. Man, summertime, it's cold, it's 17, 16. How is that possible? Yeah, rain is okay because it's always, always rain here, but cold, man. Cold. So for dessert, I'm having pineapple with sugar and cinnamon. And? It helps to digest all the meat we ate, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's basically a digestive. I need it because it I had helps. a lot of meat. Uh -huh. It helps. Mmm, this is so good. I personally love cinnamon. Mm -hmm. Canela, always. Canela, it's the mm -hmm. same in Portuguese. Canela, canela. And, and sugar, it's azúcar. Azúcar. And, and pineapple, abacaxi. Oh, that's different. Abacaxi. Abacaxi. Yeah. Abacaxi. Mm. Oh man, it's like burst, mm -hmm. burst in your mouth, sweet. I love the smokiness. Having it there, like by the fire, exactly changes the whole thing. Exactly, it's not a, it's not a, like a regular pineapple, right? Mm. It's big, juicy, oh. sweet, and acid, so, sour a little bit. This can be probably the best pineapple ever. Mm -hmm. The just taste different world, and this comes from right here, right? Yeah. So slight sourness, mm -hmm. very watery. Crunchy. Oh, my last bite of the day, bro. That's it. I think after this, we're going on a food tour. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. So, if you ever find yourself coming to Curitiba, right outside, about 20 minutes from the downtown center, coming from Sao Paulo, is this amazing restaurant, Rosa Brasil. So, they do fully de chao style, right? Fully de chao style, which is basically, you know, fire on the floor. They use the ash to cook the meat. Meat is place vertically for yeah. about eight hours. Yeah, eight hours. They do uh, costela, so the ribs of the, the beef. The ribs, beef. They also do pork. pork. They do panceta. Panceta. They do lamb. They didn't have lamb today, but they yeah. have lamb. So if it's a good day, lots of people, they'll yeah. have like 32 wow. huge exactly. ribs. Oh my God, that's crazy. That's kind of like a standard uh, size for this type of thing, right? Yeah, and he's actually building a bigger spot. It's like exactly. triple the size. 18,000 square meter. Just that. Yeah, this second. one is 800, the other one 18,000. 18,000. And yeah, yeah, this is a family restaurant, right? So everybody inside are all families from the area. Out here, you have a bunch of tables, very long. This one's like a, a rust, look at this. It's like the wood is like slanted at certain points. Like your, your drink just flips right there. Very Amazing. simple. Very simple. Very authentic. Gotta be, give a big thanks to the owner Andrew for hosting us. The yeah. food was phenomenal. Probably the best ribs I think I've ever had. Yeah, and I, man, great cost benefit, right? Yeah, yeah. like fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. I think so. And I mean, obviously the drinks are not included, not so included. they have wine from the area. They have beer. This is from Argentina, so not local, but still craft beer. Still very snobbish. If you like beer, and yeah, my man, thank you so much. Thank you. It was thank a great you. day. I'm excited, bro. This is our first like few hours in Curitiba. Man, delicious lunch. I cannot believe the weather, though. This and, feels like winter. And I cannot wait for the next meal. Sorry to say that. I'm still hungry. <laughs> Can you believe it? Man, let's have coffee, right? Uh, Curitiba is well known to have a really good coffee, special coffee. We're here at Luca Cafe. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're not open to sit down. Yeah. But to take away. Yeah. But so it's Sunday. It's raining. It's like. If it's a slow Sunday, basically, things exactly. are basically half closed. Yes. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a coffee. We're going to see a little bit of the city, probably eat some food, visit oh. a traditional bar. Yeah, yeah. We're going to eat Jaguar meat, which is, I believe, is not Jaguar. It's not Jaguar. Y you see a It's called Jaguar meat, but it's, it's not Jaguar. Yeah. And then what are we doing after that? Uh, another bar and trying some local food from Curitiba. Curitiba, awesome. Yes. Okay guys, let's have some coffee. Let's do this it. This is called Luca Coffee. If you guys didn't know, this city had a lot of Italians. It was like bound yes. by Italians. Yes, a lot, huge Italian influence, huge. And they like special coffee. And it's a great place to have coffee because it's always cold, it's always wet, rainy, perfect I, time I, to have a cappuccino. I can't believe it's summer right now in Brazil. Look at this. 17 Celsius. <laughs> no, let's, go on. let's go inside. Guys, I love this coffee shop, Luca Coffee Shop. So if you go downstairs, you can see a European cafe style, very Italian looking. Over here to the left, they have all the coffee beans that they have from the area. So from Bahia, from uh, Norte do Parana, so north part. 
Cerrada. So different regions of the country or different states, right? And then if you want to buy your coffee, you can buy some and they'll grind it for you if you want or you can take the beans home, right? Hey, I'm gonna buy some coffee. What do you recommend, my friend? What do you recommend? There are some that I could recommend, but I sold already. <laughs> oh, come on. No, there are more. What, what do you got, what do you got? This is one of the best coffees from Minas Gerais. It tastes like a sh uh, little bit like chocolate, orange, does have a floral notes, also pretty sweet. Really nice coffee. All right, guys, I love coffee. I just bought a brand new machine at my house. So, I'm gonna take this one that you said. Can you grind it for me, or is it already grinded, this one? Really good. Oh my god, it smells fantastic. Mm. It's one of the best Brazilian ones. So, so 54 and how much is the weight here? 250 grams. So 250 grams for $11, right? $11 for 250 grams, I think it's a good deal. And this is one of the best, right? One of the best. And you know guys, it's already almost 5.30. We're gonna have dinner soon. Instead of having a coffee, I think I'm gonna have a beer because you said you have craft beer yes, from Curitiba. Yes, from Curitiba. Morada. Morada. Yeah, it sounds like Spanish, but it's Portuguese. Morada. Okay, so I'm getting this beer, Hop Arabica. It's actually coffee, right? Yeah. There's coffee infused in it, and this is what type of beer? Claro com café. So it's a blonde ale, coffee blonde ale. I've never had a coffee blonde ale, and it's only 19, 19 uh, real. So yeah. like four dollars, right? Plus that, so $11, so $15 total. Obrigado. Hey man, Luca Cafe, it's great. Uh, they produce uh, their own coffee, they roast their coffee, they make their own uh, bread, so it's kind of like bakery, kind of like roastery. So I think when you're in Curitiba, man, it's a place that you have to come, you know, to have a good special uh, coffee. And like you, take some beans to take it home which is, I believe, it's kind of like a nice souvenir to give to family and friends, you know, special coffee from Brazil. And again, if you don't want to have coffee, you can have coffee beer. Obrigado. Ah, thank you very much. See you soon. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to drink the beer. Okay, guys, I've never seen a coffee blonde ale. Oh my God, this is like so weird. It's like a blonde ale, but then you have like a roasty coffee taste to it. Nothing like a good cold beer. You know, I'm a beer snob. And this guy was telling me like, you can't, you can't even imagine the beer culture in Southern Brazil because of the influence from the Germans. So if you guys don't know about that, Southern Brazil, lots of Germans immigrated down here. So beer culture, lots of sausages. I mean, very, very different. Everybody looks more just Blonde, more, more German, right? All the women, blonde girls, blue eyes, beautiful. Mm. It's actually a mix between like a blonde ale and, and like a porter. Yeah, but you say like kind of like late to have coffee, but yeah, there's some caffeine here, I believe. Yeah, but this is Very minimal. minimal. This is minimal. Yeah, minimal this I, I can drink ten. But taste coffee. Taste, <laughs> yeah, coffee. taste coffee. Taste coffee. That's what I'm saying. Like it's it's a mix between like a right. blonde ale and a porter. You have that roasty coffeeness, right. you know. Extra blonde. And I love I love the can. And it's called Cerveja Extra Clara Com Café. Com Café. Very nice. Yes. Cool, 100% man. 100% Brazilian coffee. 100%. This is a 5% alcohol. So, yeah. So, it was like Luca Café, like uh, expertise coffee with mm -hmm. Morada beer expertise. They got all together. They made a partnership and they created this amazing product. It is nice. Yeah. Whoa. So different. Very crafty. Yeah. So, I guess we go. Let's go. Let's rock and roll, bro. Let's go, let's go. Sunday, gloomy, cold Sunday in Curitiba. As you can see, the whole city is basically dead. We're gonna go to one place now um, to try some stuff. Yes. But as you can see, I mean, the town is basically deserted right now, right? Yes, pretty dead. It's almost like winter, man. You know, it reminds of winter in Brazil, but we're in summer. So crazy. Yeah, we're gonna try the the min, mince meat. And what about Jaguar? That's how oh, we call Jaguar. Yeah, but it's not Jaguar, guys, please. Why do you call it Jaguar then? Because of, uh, it gets you a bad breath. The, the Jaguar's uh, ah, bad breath. Is that why? Yeah, that's why. And so here in Curitiba, we're going through the downtown area right now. Lots of commercial spaces, different styles of buildings, right? So you have like small one level commercial, you know, building, and then you have a 20, 30, 40 story building, 
commercial, office, and residential. It's a mix, big yeah. mix here. This actually feels like a downtown in America, you know, like areas that are just empty, you know, vacant land. Then you have an amazing hotel. Then you have more vacant land, like parking lot. Then you have a garage, yeah. gas station, convenience store. So this is center center, right? Center center, downtown Curitiba. And where yes. are we staying? Like what area? Batel, yeah. yeah. Batel is the best neighborhood in Curitiba. It's like upscale neighborhood. Batel, one of one of them, one of them. And our next stop is Barbaran, Bar Barbaran. Barbaran. Okay. Yeah, it's a Ukrainian bar. Man, we have a, a big uh, community of uh, Ukrainians in Brazil. Ukrainian descendants, right? Yeah, descendants. Uh, this is uh, Ukrainian uh, community, like uh, this whole building. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So here they serve men. Uh, like uh, the jaguar meat, which is not jaguar, it's minced meat. Yeah. Uh, and another sandwich, which is kind of like the ground beef croqueta okay. into a bread. Awesome. Right. And they also serve Ukrainian food. Ukrainian food, so exactly. So like Ukrainian, but obviously with Brazilian twist to it. Yes. So this place has a lot of, so as you can say, nice decor, right? I love it. The ceiling here. Yeah, high ceilings on the top. It's like yeah. beer signs for the original Antarctica beer. Yeah. But they also have beers to the right. They have the map of Ukraine over a here. A lot of signs of Ukrainian, right? Yeah, a lot of signs of Ukraine, of Ukraine, and they also have like a Ukraine festival, right? Exactly, man. Uh, they celebrate Ukrainian festivals here, like uh, Ukrainian folklore. And this is a Bohemian bar, you know. And it's the great place to have uh, Jaguar meat. Let's have Jaguar meat now. And like I said, I'm gonna have to have a beer because they have a lot of craft beer here. So again, as we told you before, Germans, but also different European communities have come down to Southern Brazil. Ukrainians are here, Ukrainians. I love this, this is so unique. And yeah. if you guys don't know, you know, obviously I'm Hungarian. Hungary shares the border with Ukraine. Similar stuff there. Cool. Look at all the beer, man, amazing. Cerveza. Cerveza. Um prazer. Um prazer de conhecer. Um prazer, um prazer. Um prazer, um prazer. So this is the Ukrainian style Raki, right? It's like Raki? Like, yeah. like Rapa? <laughs> Similare? <laughs> no, similare? Yeah. Okay, it's frozen, dude. It's ice. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Look. The my family is from Hungary. Hungary? Hungary, Budapest. So, the lato di Ukraine. Oh. I'm trying to speak Portuguese. Eu falo italiano e anche spagnolo, so Portuguese. Hungry? <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is the house drink. There's like pepper inside. I think there's a uh, lemon in there. It looks like vodka. I'm sure it's vodka. Okay. Ooh, pepper. I like it. A little spice. Hey, un un pochino picante. Oh, un po picante. Yeah, so it's a little sweet because the honey, yeah, right. but then it has a spice. Mmm, bon bon. <laughs> it's like amazing. So my man doesn't drink, but you gotta smell this. What do you smell? It smells really good. <laughs> I think it smells it, it's, spicy. It's pretty intense. I mean, so it's vodka, made with potatoes, and no. Spices. I mean, there's spices and honey. Spice, yeah. And wood, maybe. Honey. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's a little sweet, but then yeah. you also have the spices. It's a nice kick. It, it, you feel it. You keep right. feeling it. Right. All right. Time to eat. Okay, let's, let's go. Do it. All right, we're going to the kitchen to see how they make some of these dishes. Igor, the owner, is going to prepare uh, the mince meat, which is the jaguar meat, and. Uh, also the bolinho, which is the croqueta, the ground beef croqueta. Let's see what this jaguar dish is all about. Jaguar, not jaguar, minced meat raw, like basically beef tartare. All right guys, we are about to eat the jaguar minced meat. Obviously it's not jaguar, it's just minced meat, beef tartare with spring onions, onions, uh, brown bread, we have ginger, mustard and olive oil and you were saying that you have to try this yeah and it's a must like you have the mince and meat with the black mustard and the olive oil so you put everything on top of a piece of bread exactly. right a little bit of everything yeah it's kind of like a tapa right like Simil a tapa a tapa Similar, okay. yeah and then you man uh you have to you know 
set the, the, the meat, the onions, the, the spring onions, you know. And the spring onions is something you said is like very typical in Curitiba. 99% of the dishes that they serve in yeah. Curitiba, they, they put lots of spring onions, man. I love it. I it's love way it too. better than regular onions. Yeah, I, I think it's a relationship of hate and love. A lot of people don't like. Oh God, I love I it. I can eat it forever. Yeah, I love this it. This with the beef? Yeah. And this is the number one bar slash restaurant in all of Curitiba. Yes. Wow. It is number one. So Can't basically, uh, you take a piece of uh, bread like okay. this, right? So we both get a piece of bread. Exactly. Then okay. you, you get a piece of uh, the meat. So first, bread. Then you get <sighs> some of this. Yes. Right? Enough, right? Like, good amount, right? A very nice amount. A very <laughs> like nice butter, amount. Like butter, like butter. Look, look at the color of the meat. I know, the color Seriously, is so amazing. look at the color. You know, a lot of people don't like eating beef tartare. I love it. First time I had it, I was with Moroccans. We ate it. Yes. Oh, so good. And and David, it's already seasoning, right? Like with balsamic uh, chili sauce and okay. salt. And so, salt. So then I get some of this. Like marinated, right? Yeah. Not for sure. It's marinated. Yeah, marinated. Yeah, it's not just like... No. It's not regular. It's not raw, right? right? Wow, look at that. Man, now you're just gonna eat it and close your eyes and... Is that how we do it? Just eat yes. it and close your eyes? Oh, man. I love the ginger, man. Mm -hmm. The ginger, man. Mm. It's kind of like sushi. Huh? <laughs> kind of like tuna. The beef sushi. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and the onion is crunchy. It's crunchy. Yeah. It's spicy. Spicy. Man. I don't know if it's the wasabi or the mustard, but there's a lot of spice I, I, there. I, I think it's the wasabi. Yeah? More the wasabi. Wow. I mean, this is like Look, out of control. We forgot the olive oil. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I remember that. I was like, what happened here? So just fill it up, right? Yeah, yeah. throw it on top, bro. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. We don't need too much olive. No. All so right. yeah, man, you're trying the Jaguar meat. First time in Curitiba. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's a must. You must have this dish here in Curitiba. Wow, bro, hey. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Thank you. Mm. Amazing. So fresh. Delicious. What a combination. Oh. <laughs> Muito bom. Muito bom. Mm. 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 Picante. De de delicioso. Muito bom. Picante is apimentado. Sí, exacto. Apimentado. Wow. And the bread is also very soft, very good, you know. And if you have it straight? It's, a, it's also good. I love it. Yeah, me too. So good. I don't know how people think this is weird. I personally enjoy it mm -hmm. like this. Even like this and just get a little bit of this ginger. Yes. That's wasabi. That's wasabi. <laughs> exactly. You were saying like ginger, but it's actually wasabi. You know what's funny though? Because in the States, in a sushi restaurant, they give yeah. you Wasabi or ginger? Yes. It's never pure. No. In Japan, it's like this pure. Pure. Wow. Man, you're in ba at Barbaran. Barbaran, oh they don't joke around. I mean, I gotta have an entire one of these myself. Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've had too much bread today. I'm eating just the meat with the mustard and some onions. Mm. This is too delicious. My mouth is still watering. Wow. David, now uh, we're gonna show how to prepare the pão com bolinho, which is the croqueta into the sandwich. Here they have different kinds. Uh, so she's gonna prepare for us now, the sandwich. So the different kinds are going to number four. Number four. Number four. Top seller. Top seller. Top seller. Awesome. So for this sandwich, it's bread. Then they add um, cucumber, cucumber. They mayo. add mayo, wasabi, wasabi, uh, and then like a type of sausage, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like Brazilian pepperoni, and then the croqueta, huge ground beef croqueta, added some mozzarella, and really, right? Yeah, that's it. She like torched it, torched it. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Um, I don't know. It's kind of simple, right, man? Yeah, it's simple. I if never you have all the ingredients. But I've never seen a croqueta that big. It's yes. like a huge croqueta. It actually looks like a big piece of bread. Yeah, and here's number one, man. Number one. Let's go eat. Let's go eat. Pão de bolinho. So basically, bread with croquette, right? So look at that. Oh wow. Amazing. 
All right, guys, what a monster croqueta. So you have sausage croquette, uh, you got some ham, you got some mustard, you got the wasabi, you have cheese. Mayo. Mayo. Mm. Oh, wow. This is insane. I have no idea what's in that croqueta. So it's basically like a beef croquette. Ground beef, right? Mm. Ground beef, but the outside is like black. So it looks a little different, more just like bread. Like the cheese on top. Very nice with the mustard, mayo, a little creamy. You got a pickle as well, right? Yes. So big. This is half. Mm -hmm. Huge. Huge. Mm. The best comparison for this would be like a Cuban sandwich without a croqueta. But sometimes you have croqueta as a Cuban sandwich. Mm. Kind of like a bocadillo, right? Very similar, yeah. Kind of. I mean, it's basically bocadillo but with a giant croqueta. But the mix between mustard, mayo, pickle, the difference is they added like a uh, sausage in here as well, right? Mmm. Muito bom. Rafa. Muito <laughs> bom. I'm joking with her. She can't eat this. I like licked it, the whole thing. Mmm. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. This is Colorado Brewery. This is actually their porter. And it is a coffee type porter, 6% alcohol. Looks great. So I actually went to their spot in Sao Paulo. I tried their Imperial IPA. This is their porter. Oh wow. Oh, super nice. Super coffee. Like coffee to the max. It's almost like an like a espresso porter. And if you guys don't know about porters, porters are gonna be more on the chocolatey coffee side. They came from England, uh, you know, like 13th, 15th century around there. Porters usually are between 5 and 7% alcohol. Muito uh, bom. This is really good. Yeah, it's fantastic. Saúde. 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 That's cheers in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, right? Wow, so crispy. It's delicious. So for any of you guys who are beer fanatics, addicts, <laughs> if you guys like beer, if you're German, Dutch, you know, all my Northern Europeans that like beer, come out here to Southern Brazil, try their amazing craft beers. Beer snobs all the way. Oh yeah, to my English friends. Ales every day. Oh, so good. Oh, the texture on this is amazing. Not so much chocolate, just straight up coffee. Coffee in Brazil. É melhor. Yes, Brazil is the best. É melhor. É melhor. 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 So if you guys don't know, in the Ukraine they have cabbage dumplings. What's the story behind this? I'll tell you really fast. The Silk Road went through the Ukraine. That's sort of the history, right? And that's what brought noodles, what brought gyoza, dumpling, and that's why in Poland, Ukraine, you can find this. It's really amazing. This is different. We're eating in Brazil, right? Mmm. It's creamy. It tastes like sour cream, right? Mm. It's uh, just cream. Creamy. A little, I mean, I feel like it was like sour cream. Nice dumpling, it's steamed. With potato. With potato. No, but with with uh, cabbage. Cabbage cabbage and potato. Cabbage and potato. Mm. So I want you guys to see this. So it's a little different. It's more dense. You can't really see the filling, right? I'm Hungarian. I love cabbage. Cabbage all day. Um piato muito bom. Oh yeah, flushing it down with some nice dark beer. Very Eastern European of me, huh? Kind of like steamed gyoza, right? Mm hmm. Mm. Potato, cabbage, and creamy. Delicious. It is almost nine at night. Mm -hmm. We woke up at like 5.30 in the morning to drive out here to Curitiba. Five hours driving. Five hours driving. We ate a lot of food. It's been a rainy, cold day, but hey, we made it. We made it. Fist bump, fist bump. Cheers. Prost. Oh, prost. Prost. So good. This is amazing beer. Yeah. Espresso. Mm. 
É um, um, plazer, um prazer. Prazer todo meu. Prazer. Alright guys, we had amazing food. Yes. I am tired. Me too. We've had a long day and look at this. Let's go. It is gloomy. Yes. This feels like I'm in, in, in Scotland. In, in, or, or London. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The same thing, right? 15 Celsius now, probably. The UK. Yes. But I love it. The weather is... It's nice. It's... it's, it's Man, it's a perfect weather to gain weight, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's because all about the eating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rio for food. Let's do it. <laughs> so where are we going? Where's the hotel? Uh, nearby. Nearby? <laughs> yeah. We're going to our hotel, Intercity, uh, Batel. Batel, it's like one of the upscale neighborhoods in, uh, in Curitiba. Don't come here on a Sunday. Please don't come. And don't go to any city in Brazil on a Monday. Everything is closed. Most of the places so, are closed. So Tuesday through Saturday, you're fine. Yes. But yeah, as you can see, Usually. it's like, it's dead. We're driving straight to the hotel. Only a five minute drive. I can't wait to see my room. I am so tired. Ah, oh, it's cansado. Cansado. Tropo cansado. How do you say tropo? Muito cansado. Muito cansado. Muito cansado. Do we made it? Yes, finally. In the city, in the city, Batel. How many rooms they got? Here, almost uh, 185. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eight as well. Cool. Here it's like uh, they kind of like have the same standard, like usually 200 rooms, located in the uh, business district, so you can do everything by food. And this is my room, eight one two, at the inner city. Inner city hotel, that's what I'm working with for the entire trip. Love this place. Another amazing, spacious, clean, modern, really colorful this one. You have this like beautiful bluish green. Over here we have a desk. I think they gave me some acai. Acai right here with some strawberries, bananas. And then guys, that's basically our night here in Curitiba. We arrived really late, like almost four in the afternoon. We tried you know, a beer at the coffee place. I bought some coffee, Luca coffee. Then we went to that bar, Barbarana. Barbarana? Amazing. Ukrainian, if you guys didn't know that, Ukrainians are like huge here in Curitiba. I mean, a big mix of cultures, Ukrainians, Italians, etc., Germans in the area. I mean, such a diverse place. Southern Brazil is very, very different from the rest of Brazil. And yeah, I mean, the food was delicious. Gotta say, wow, amazing food, delicious beer, and yeah, this is just the beginning of Curitiba. I'm sorry we got here late, I'm very tired, I've had an exhausting three days so far here in Brazil, but I'm very excited to explore tomorrow in Curitiba. Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful, sunny Curitiba, Brazil, the cultural and ecological capital of southern Brazil beautiful city right now we are in the botanical gardens one of the main attractions it's a free attraction that was built in 1991 in a french style you can walk around you can see the grounds you can go up to this beautiful building from there you get beautiful views and as you can see right here they did the flowers in the shape of a christmas tree so that's a christmas tree and there's some small rodents walking around here really funny they keep popping out but every time i get close they run back in and after this, we're gonna go explore the historical center of Curitiba and eat some traditional breakfast. You know, go to a few different spots that serve Curitiba breakfast. Let's go, man. I'm hungry and we're going to attend like some really traditional places in Curitiba. That's where the Curitibanos, the people that were born here, they're very proud uh, to attend. So it's all a local place and uh, avoid to come here around 9 to 11. It's always crowded. Uh, I like to come here like around 8. It's a good time. Pretty much empty. And we're really, really lucky today because it's not raining. Curitiba, it rains almost every day. I think it's like 200 days a year. Yesterday it was pouring. This morning it was really, really wet. But now the sun came out. So now you know. When you come to Curitiba, if it didn't rain, you weren't here. You weren't here, yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's go. I'm super hungry. 9 in the morning. Where are these rodents at though? I want to see a rodent. <laughs> they're gone. They're funny, man. Yes. They're like they're like calibara. So what is it called? Yes, here we call it esquilos. 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 Okay. Yes. All right, let's go eat. Rafa. 
Vai lá, mas a gente vai no mercado. Bom agora. dia. Bom dia. Let's go eat. Let's go. I'm on job. What we're going to right now? What is it? Yeah, this? we're going to a place called Pizza Ita Italia. Uh, that's where the Curitibanos uh, have breakfast there. It's just basically like a slice of pizza with a, a banana smoothie or like strawberry smoothie. For breakfast. For breakfast. It's a downtown Curitiba. It's simple but very traditional. And it's cool because uh, it's a local place. It's not a tourist place, you know. And the pizza is okay, but uh, I like the atmosphere and the ambience, you know. It's super cool. And what is this area we're in right now? Right now we're just heading to downtown uh, Curitiba. To be honest, we're extremely lucky today. I mean, it said it was going to be raining the whole day. And look. You can even see beautiful. the blue sky. Look. I know, you can see blue sky. Blue sky. It, it was overcast, it was raining, now it's perfect. Even the temperature is getting warmer. It is. It, it, <laughs> we had this on, like last night it was cold. It was cold. It was cold. And when we got here yesterday it was chilly raining like crazy yeah and then look at this no Incredible. i would say it's like overcast right yeah overcast. i mean it is perfect I, i'd rather have overcast a little a little bit of chill, chill. right like yeah. you know 70 degrees 65 perfect right. and i love the city i mean it's big three million people live here oh it's big huge mix of italians germans yeah. ukrainians like our it's, friend last night yeah it's the biggest city in uh south region of brazil okay it the is biggest one wow yeah. i thought porto alegre was bigger no porto alegre is smaller smaller wow smaller, okay yeah. wow and so we're going right now on this main avenue into the circle center lots of mix of buildings right here it's like you know two-story building one-story building 18-story building 50-story yeah. building just never ending uh, a mix of the yeah, infrastructure if you notice like uh, by the botanical garden only houses uh, surrounded right like around the botanical garden only houses so yeah it, it's nice to you know see this mix of uh, architecture buildings you know it, it's cool man yeah usually brazil uh most of the cities at the traffic light It's normal to have like street vendors that like selling biscuit, candy. Usually it's common like, you know, the street vendors set the bag by the meter, right? The windshield meter. Uh, so if you're interested to buy, you just take it, give it to your eyes and retrieve a bag of candies. It's a way to help, you know? Yeah, yeah so I bought, obviously I want to help out two eyes is roughly like 35 cents, 40 yeah. cents. And we have some candy now. Man, you want some? <laughs> it, it, really, it really helps, you know, like, usually we, we do, you know, un unfortunately, uh, we would love to see them having, like, a, a real job, but it's not like that, right? Yeah. It's hard. It's life, guys, but if you can, please support the locals, oh, always. Absolutely. All right, guys, so we made it here to the downtown. We're parking in a parking lot. It's, like, two bucks for three hours. Pretty good deal. And is it downtown? It reminds me of a, uh, you know, it reminds me of like a downtowns all around the United States. Big mix, you know, you have vacant parking lots or vacant land, and you have parking lots. You have buildings over here. It's a little different though because you have this building was like a house, right? House in the middle of here. You have a lot of murals. Again, here in Brazil, they love to draw. They love to paint. Lots of murals, especially Sao Paulo, full of murals. All right, dude, let's go eat. Okay, David, it's right there, Italia Pizza. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, since 1969. 1969? 51 years. Pizza for breakfast. Last pizza. time I did that, yeah. I was in Italy. Yeah, pizza for bom breakfast. Dia, bom dia, bom dia. Bom dia, bom dia. Bom dia, Pizza. Hoje eu tenho fatia de mussarela, presunto ou peperoni. Peperoni, ham or just mozzarella? É, peperoni. What is this? Yeah, it's a smoothie, uh, strawberry, avocado and papaya with milk and sugar. It's just delicious. I've never had a smoothie with avocado. Man, it's great. Yeah, because usually in Brazil, man, it, we tend to make uh, lots of dishes, uh, sweet avocado, right? Like with lime, with sugar. And it's not like in Mexico that they do the guacamole. So the rest of the world think it's really strange when you use avocado for other things. All right, let's <laughs> do this. Cheers. Starting the day with a nice smoothie. <laughs> so milkshake, man. It's thick. Mmm. Delicious. Super sweet. Yes. I, I think you tend to uh, taste more the papaya, right? Yeah. More the papaya. It's like super, super, super papaya. Mm -hmm. A little bit of strawberries. I don't really taste the avocado. Mm -mm. Like, I'm and down even, the and even the strawberry. Yeah, yeah. You can taste. Yeah, taste. This is like straight papaya. Yeah. 
Whoa, that's so good. I also like the the kind of like the milkshake texture. Yeah, yeah. Very creamy. Very creamy, very thick, very filling. I mean, you have this, that's your breakfast. Yeah. You'll be fine. And not too sweet. Not too sweet. Mm -hmm. I think it was sweet. Mm -hmm. I think the smoothie is too much. Really filling. Moito pancha. <laughs> Satisfaz muito rápido. Vai deixar com barrigão. I love it. So it's like an Italian diner from 1969, right? Wow. So it, it's. It takes back over 50 years, really amazing. Over here to the right, you have basically things that, you know, represent Italy. We have Luca, so if you guys ever heard of Luca, that's in Tuscany, I've been to that town, really beautiful. So I guess the guy's from Luca, right? Yeah. And then this is Venezia. Uh, here they have some of the, you know, some of the things that they produce, like cars, uh, race yeah, Vespa, etc. You can order, you know, this pizza, you can order a smoothie, milkshake. They also have coffee, lots of different things. This is gonna be awesome. Mm. So it's like a deep crust. Deep. Yeah, big. Mm -hmm. Not deep crust. Like usually it's like deep dish. It's like thick, thick pizza on top. You have a layer of cheese. Then you have pepperoni and that's oregano, right? Oregano. What I like to do? Always put on some of that chili. Mm, chili flakes. People say it's it's a lot, it's never a lot. Mmm. All by yourself. Wow. So basically, delicious frozen pizza. And now I'm gonna add some hot sauce. Do people actually put hot sauce like this? It's not really hot. Mmm. -hmm. It's nice. Pimenta. Not too spicy. It's actually really good with the spice. To be honest, I think I've never had pizza for breakfast, even in Italy, but. Why not? Mm. Man, usually I like to, you know, put some olive oil. I like it. And then sprinkle some pepperoni, right? Call calabresa. Maybe with the hand. The crispy dough is kind of like bread, right? Mm -hmm. Very thick. So what do you think? Should I try this one? This, this is just regular, right? Yeah. We call mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cheese is delicious. And the oregano? Put some olive oil. All right, so I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna put olive oil, right? Woo! That's a lot. And then I'm gonna put the chili flakes, but throughout, right? Why not, bro? Oh, dude. No. Different style, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's delicious. Obviously, it's frozen pizza, mm -hmm. but it just has a different taste to it. The dough is different. The cheese, amazing. Whoa. It's their own style. Mm -hmm. I think this is also picante, mm -hmm. no? Mm -hmm. mm. Delicious. Ch Champions breakfast. Obrigado. Obrigada. Ciao. Ciao. I gotta say, that lady was too nice. She comped us. It was like 11 and 15. I think the smoothie was like, I think 12 too. Yeah, so actually they, they do a combo, right? Like 16. 16? Yeah, slice of pizza with the smoothie. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, so that's 16. good. So it's yeah. like three US dollars for yeah, that. Yeah, it's not bad, right? It's not bad, so we spent two of those, right? So yeah. 16 and 16. 32. 32, not bad, not bad. Not bad. Great deal for a quick breakfast, you know, $3 a person. Yes. Really filling. I mean, really I can't. Filling. I don't need to eat anything else, but I can. And delicious, right, man? Delicious. Delicious. And now this is downtown. Downtown Curitiba. Hey, David, look how beautiful is this? The downtown Curitiba, man. It's like the finance district. It's so organized, man. So clean, so neat, so nice. This is the reading uh, trolley, like the streetcar, right? It's kind of like one, right? the it's old the one. one. The old one. It's amazing. So yeah, so we have the streetcar here. We have buildings, we have historical buildings. This one, Palacio Avenida, right? Palacio very, Avenida. very beautiful. This all looks very European right here. Over here as well, smaller buildings, but everything reminds me of Europe, but I guess that's the influence. Totally, totally Europe. Like a mix of uh, Italy, German, you know, Germany. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, this is gorgeous. Yeah, I love, so cool. I love the street. Yeah. It's clean. I don't see any yeah, dirt. These are the famous Portuguese stones, right? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Portuguese. So if, when you go to Lisbon, it's kind of the same style. Nice. And at the very end right here, we have a Christmas tree. Obviously, Christmas is coming around in about exactly. two weeks. And yeah, just restaurants, small souvenir shops. You have, you know, bars, bars, there's beer, there's fast food, library, bookstore. Cool. This is very nice. I like this. Such a beautiful day, huh? It's a beautiful day and thank God it's not rainy. This is an amazing strip in downtown. Pedestrian only walkway, Christmas tree, lots of buildings. I mean, I love it. I love it, too. This is beautiful. Beautiful. I think it's my favorite spot so far of the trip in terms of location. Yes. You know? And, and I like how they're so organized and neat, you know, man. That's why yeah. it's like the motto city. Right? Yeah, and with the Christmas tree, with the weather, I mean, it really brings you that, that Christmas spirit, even though we're in summer. Yes, <laughs> but it looks like we're during winter. This is winter, dude. Winter, this is winter. What a surprise. There's a Christmas market in Curitiba. Yes. Awesome. But you, usually here's like a permanent market. Uh, do you like sweets? Do you want to try some sweets? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. So this is coconut. Yeah, this is called quebra queijo. Quebra queijo. Yeah. It's basically the flesh. It's a hard coconut and it's called quebra queijo because it's kind of like your chin right here kind of like break because it's hard because you have to chew in right so that's this one right here really tough but this is gonna be amazing so it's coconut with sugar mm -hmm. so basically coconut, coconut with sugar yeah. look at this yeah, just coconut a bar a yeah. bar this is originally from bahia mm. oh wow so sweet mm. it's like coconut yeah. shavings with sugar all compressed and made into a big bar it has a lot of sugar, but it's delicious. I like it. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. I love it too. Everything coconut, right? Mm -hmm. So you just gotta break off a piece. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing. I like it. Really filling. Sugar mm -hmm. rush. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. I think I'm good with this. Yeah, it's too much. What a surprise. Christmas market. And they're yeah. selling like basically everything for Christmas. They have stuff for the trees. Especially this month, but this is a permanent uh, street market. Okay. So usually, of course, out of December, they're selling other stuff. Usually, handcraft. Handcraft. Handcrafts. Yeah, so we have a mix of things. Yeah, Souvenirs, and, basically. And usually at the end, as you can see right in the middle of the square, we see some food carts, some okay. street food carts. And right here, they have honey. Look at this. Yes. A bomb. A bomb. Yeah, look at that. Once you pass the market, you make it here to the center where the fountain is. And around the fountain, there's like 18 different small food trucks. Each one yeah. is for a different country or a different state in Brazil. Correct. It's a permanent uh, food uh, street market. Mm -hmm. And man, all types of food. Food from Bahia, food from Bolivia, Poland, Italy, uh, Minas wow. Gerais State. Mexico. Mexico, Belgium here. You can have a waffle. Amazing. Yeah, and it's cool, man. They're all very organized. It is a permanent uh, fair. I like so it. So you come here anytime. They're always here, you know. So if you like craving to eat like foreigner food, uh, food from different uh, say of Brazil, that's the place, you know. Awesome. Yeah. It's so cool. yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna eat here. We're gonna continue because we're gonna go eat some sambo testicle. Oh my god! Yeah, it's typical here. I love it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. There's something that you have to try here, which is Canton. It's like a fermented uh, drink that they get out of the the grape. He's originally from Portugal, but as you know, there's like a huge influence of Portuguese here in Paraná State. So it costs five for this, and this is like a hot wine, right? Okay, see, uh, I've tried this in Poland. Yeah. In like Christmas, uh, Mercados Natales in uh, Poland, they have this. Wow. Yeah, here, here we go, Kentown. Mm. It's like super hot. Yeah, it's super hot. There's super obviously hot. alcohol in it. Yeah. Mm, delicious. Very, very nice. It's like a Sort of like a licorice wine. That's what yeah, I like the best. Hot red wine, right? Kind mm -hmm. of. Yeah, with cinnamon, with right? Cinnamon. cinnamon. You can also add marshmallows. Then canela. Yeah. You want to try with the marshmallow? I think it's gonna no, be no. too sweet. No, this is awesome though. Yeah. Awesome. I love this. With this weather, this is perfect. Yeah. Mmm. So good. Yeah. Too hot, right? Yeah. But delicious. <laughs> The only problem with this is that it is so hot that you can't like go fast. You have to take it slow. And five for this, so one US dollar. Very nice. Obrigado. Definitely stop at this Portugal stand. You can try that. And you can try also codfish fritters, which she's literally cooking right now. She's frying it, right? Oh, amazing. All right, let's go eat. Obrigado. 
<laughs> this lady right next to us is mind. from Gaucha. Gaucha. Is that our state? Gaucha. Gaucha is where we're going. Gaucha. He'll get into the station. Okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. those kebabs smelled amazing. And they have kebabs there? Man. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? I don't know. Of course. <laughs> All right, let's cross. I want to try those go, testicles. Organs are the best. Yeah. The market's right there. You cross the street, and this is Bar Stewart, famous since 1904, over 100 and whatever that is, 16 years. Okay, let's go inside. Let's eat some testicles. This is the oldest bar in Curitiba, and they think it's the oldest bar in Brazil. Correct. People, you know, say yes, no. Yeah. I mean, they're claiming they're, they're the claiming oldest it, one. They're claiming There's it. a bar in Rio, they're called Bar Luis, but... And my friend here, the owner, is gonna pour me an amazing uh, liquor, right? This is a cachaça, which is a sugarcane liquor shot. This one is a very special one, it's like, like premium. So this one in particular costs $40 a shot, 40 a shot. US a shot. Yeah, and there's only 4,000 bottles. Only 4,000 bottles? Yeah, and he has two. <clears throat> good. Mm, it's good. It's um, very, a lot of fragrant, honey, right? honey, fragrant, like flowers, very, very, I would say this is something like a, like a Raki or a Grappa, very clear, but obviously it's made from sugarcane. Yes. Like the, the, the inside sugarcane, right? Yes. They basically extract it. Exactly. Right? Muito bom. Woo! Very good. Fire. So, unfortunately today they don't have the testicles, but they do have another exotic dish, which is? The crocodile tail. Crocodile tail. I'm from Miami, South Florida. We eat alligator tail. This is a little different. Same thing though, very chewy. Can it taste like chicken, but a little like thicker, right? A little more gamey. Yeah, I think the difference here that you're gonna eat with the with the corn. I mean, with the manioc flour. Okay. And with the spring onions. So I think that's the difference. And I, I don't know if you guys in Miami squeeze the lime on it. We do. And this you is do? chimichurri. Chimichurri, the Brazilian style. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, bro. Cheers. Cheers. Has some bones, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. Mm. So it's very thick, mm -hmm. like dense. I'm gonna add some chimichurri to see if taste changes. Very, very chewy. Very chewy. I, I don't love chimichurri. Not a big fan. Mm -hmm. But with this, I'll try it. I believe kind of cuts the flavor out, right? Mm. -hmm. Mm. Also, spring onion. Mm -hmm. Spring onions. The, Everything that's here. That's the deal. Always, right? Remember, I told you in Curitiba, man. Everything it's the spring onions. Everything. Mm. I like with the manioc flour. Me too. And it's not too fried. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. I'm already getting stuff, and we still have a whole day of eating. So, slow. Mm. With the flour. Yeah. Tastes better. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's delicious, but I'm good. I'm going hard out. Yes. yes. Very chewing. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of meal. Yeah, yeah. But it's good, man. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. And I like the spring onions, you know. Mm. A little bit of bone. Mm -hmm. But the mix between the lime, spring onions, this like powder. The flour. The flour. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great dish. It is. I like it. David, you're not eating anymore, but I'm gonna keep eating. Delicious. Obrigado, obrigado. Obrigado, obrigado. obrigado. All right, my friends, we did it. We explored Curitiba this morning. Started off yes. at the Botanical Gardens, came to downtown. We tried pizza, a smoothie. We walked around. We tried also here. Cocada. Like, cocada. The we coconut uh, sweet. Coconut sweet. We walked around the market, saw yes. the beautiful downtown. We also had this like. Kentown. 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 Like a, it's like a cinnamon rice hot. Uh, and clove, not right? Not rice, that wine drink, right? Yes. I've hot, had it. hot wine drink. Yeah, I usually have that in Eastern European during winter. Yes. Right? And then we came here to the oldest bar, Bar Stewart, since 1904, and we had some crocodile tail. Yes. Really delicious. Delicious. It was different, exotic. Very chewing, but I Very like chewing. it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's good. But if you come here and have the testicles, try that. Yeah, if you eat a lot, it's, it got exhaust, I think. Yeah, but yeah. it's good. Yeah, very greasy. Very greasy, yeah. I'm ready, man. I have to be honest. I need a coffee to be awake. <laughs> Let's go.
Brazilian coffee is the best and this place is the best for you. Man, in Brazil, absolutely. It's a yeah. special coffee. Uh, I would highly recommend you, you take the black honey, the beans, back home. Okay, awesome. Delicious. Let's really get it. Really good. I need espresso. Let's go. Let's go. And this is four beans. They roast all their beans. And this is Octavio. Yeah, hi, how are you? Pleasure. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is all for Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> this is not... These are now uh, the new coffee we sell called Rip Coffee Baggy. You open this this package, and then you take this bag, open this two wings. So put in the in the cup, just wow, lots of uh, hot water. And That's it. So basically this is a drip coffee bag. You know, drip coffee is obviously a little different. This is a bag, you take it home, and whenever you're ready to make a coffee, just boil water, put it in, add the water on top, and that's it. Let me try it. Yeah. It's gonna be really hot, huh? Yeah. Mm, yeah, super hot. Different. Not, not, not the same thing as having an espresso, right? Not the same. Mm. Ooh. Super piping hot. So what do you think of this coffee? I think it's good coffee. It's nice, man. It's a, just an easy way to, to drip your coffee, right? Yeah. Just hot water and you're done. You're good to go. It's really good. I like it. I like the idea. What's the name of this one? Jasmine. 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 Yeah. The Real pro coffee makers or coffee brewers what they do is they get the coffee beans and then they weigh it to see exactly how much it weighs. That's how you make the perfect coffee, right? Feel the aroma. Wow, it's like a flower in there. It's amazing. Oh, I can't wait. Let's build the clean the, the filter. And then do the magic. This jasmine bean comes from north of Rio de Janeiro, Santo, Santo. Spirito Santo. Spirito Santo, so the Holy Spirit. That's yeah, the state? Yeah, okay. Oh my God, what a coffee, man. Mmm, that's strong. Black, but I love the fragrance. Just like flowers, right? Yeah. Slight bitterness. Mmm, this is perfect. There's no better coffee in, in Brazil. For sure, dude. At least I haven't had a better coffee. Everything I've had has been weak sauce. <laughs> oh, wow. Esse aqui, esse é o Piatã. Ah, obrigada. Acho que pra você é o Jasmine, né? É pra você, ah, não? É. Yeah. <laughs> Já faço, então, tá? Eu conheço. Então, qual é esse aqui? Bahia, Bahia State. Não, nós todos compartilhamos. Você bebe, você bebe. Você bebe. Uau, muito bom. 
<laughs> I'm gonna try a little bit. You're the one you had it. I know, but I'm yeah. electric now. <laughs> mm, very different. This was not flowery. It's more bitter, but it, again, it's like incredible. The taste. And it's not like lingering too long. And I love it like this. No sugar, no cream, nothing. Thank you. Nectar? That's mm. how you say it? nectar? Nectar. Nectar. Beer and nectar. <laughs> go, go, go. Whenever you come to any coffee shops and you really like the coffee, buy a bag. I'm taking the Jasmine one to my wife. And because we don't have a grinding machine, but we do have the machine for the espressos, they're gonna grind it for me. If you have the machine, like the grinding machine, definitely take the beans, it's probably better. Everybody says it's better to take the beans over taking it grinded, but I can't do that, so I'm taking it grinded. Now they're gonna roast the coffee. So the way it works, they get, you know, a lot of green coffee, regular coffee, basically, and then they put it into the roaster. Okay, so they put the beans on top. They open the roaster, so we're into the roasting machine. It takes around 15 minutes to be done. So we're gonna wait 15 minutes. She's gonna open it, and she's gonna all come out. Obrigado. Thank you, guys. The best, the best. Sorry. See ya. Hey, obrigado. Ciao, ciao. Let's do it. Let's go. That coffee was so good. So freaking good. The best coffee I think I've had. But man, I don't know about my lifetime, but it's one of the best. And the smell right here, the aroma, you guys have no idea. All right, enough of this. Let's go eat a pastel. Can't wait. Mm, I'm starving. Woo! All right guys, hitting the road again, going to have a pastel. So it's basically like an empanada, right? Yeah, it's a just deep, deep fried pastry, right? Okay. Lots of flavor. It's very common in Brazil as well here in Curitiba. And this one has what? Oh uh, man, a bunch of flavors. A bunch of like, flavors? I've heard like, I don't know, I don't know if it's true, but like 150 flavors. In this place? Yeah, like crazy. Lots of combinations, lots of new flavors. Wow. And yeah. And it's raining again. And it's raining again. Man, here, the, the weird uh, thing about Curitiba in general, you can have sometimes the four seasons in one day, like fall, summer, spring, and winter. Like it could be hot, cold, wet, dry, sunny, and gray, and raining again. I mean, in one day. We experienced that today. It was like wet and cold, then it was sunny, and now it's wet again. I can say literally this. Juve V bar, restaurant, and pastelaria. Yeah, very traditional. Oh my gosh, man, look how many uh, flavors they have. And check this out the menu is huge. Right here it says 128 different items. They're telling us over 150. 150. Crazy. I've never seen a place with more than like five different empanadas. I'm excited. I'm hungry. Ready, Rafa? I'm hungry, very hungry. <laughs> Let's go. 
make three different pasteles huge empanadas same exact style so they fill it up put lots of ingredients inside they close it they completely seal it and they throw it into the deep fryer lots of oil and then it's ready to eat I'm excited I'm hungry <laughs> Guys, look at this monster. Which is this one? What does it have? Uh, this one called Barreado, which is a dish typical from Mojetes, which is a town near Curitiba. Okay. It's basically the shred meat with banana and manioc flour. So shredded meat and banana. And manioc flour. And manioc flour, okay. Yes. My boy said, just dive right in with your hands. Mm -hmm. Everything starts to sink. This beast. Oh man, so it's crunchy, like it's oily. Mm -hmm. oh. So far, lots of air and dough. Everything sinks. Yes, it's huge, man. It's too big. Look, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's kind of like ground beef, right? But it's yeah. shred, shred meat. Shredded. Ooh, shredded. Mm -hmm. How do you like the combination? It's like sweet with salty. Oh wow! And a little bit dry because of the the manioc flour, right? I love it. Great combination. A little sweet. The banana sweet. Yeah. Mmm. So it's it's a typical dish from this town called Mojetes. Towards the the Paraná state, like the the ocean, towards the ocean. This is so good. What a monster! It's like it's a lunch already. Yeah, I mean this is just like. You eat this and that's it. You don't need yeah, anything else. Done. Full meal. Oh How about gosh. some chili sauce? Mm hmm Homemade chili sauce. Do so you think I should put the chili? Oh, absolutely. Why not? Why not? Mm, like that, like right? Mm hmm Whatever. It's probably gonna be super hot, right? Oh my god. Got some napkins here. Mm. Oh. It's actually really it's like a mix of sweet and spicy. Almost like a sweet and sour. And salty, yeah. It, it sounds like a weird combination, but mm. it's good. This is an amazing combination. Yeah. The mix of sweet, salty, and also the meat. Yeah, and the cool theme, and you're not eating like a, a regular uh, pastry. You're having like a local flavor, you know, something that you, you, you can only have here or in Mojitas. This, right? this is like unreal. This is the best like pastel I've ever had. Yeah. Ever. And so they're here almost uh, 40 years. What do you? 39. 39 or 37, but like almost four decades. Wow. What a monster, bro. Huge. Huge. And heavy, huh? Yeah. She put a lot of meat. She put so much. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> so tasty. I'm a huge banana guy. There's so many bananas in this area plantation. Yes, yeah. This is the best. And it was a chopped banana. Wow. Chop it. Yeah. I mean, dude, the sweetness, incredible. And then you kind of have like the kind of like dry texture because of the flour, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the best like empanada. Ba ba basically, it's a pie, guys. Remember that. It's it, pie. It's kind of like big pie, yeah. 
big pie. Are I you mean, eating we're not more than eat... half of it? I know, oh, I know. Come on. You're gonna eat the whole thing because it's so good. Mm. Come on. Don't lie. I love the spice. Yeah. It's a, a good, nice, sweet and sour spice. Whoa. And the good thing, man, they don't draw in the pastry into the oil, you know, it's just... Yeah, let it flow. Yeah, let it flow. I like that. It's better because it's not, it's way too oily. Yeah, too oily. And you, see, you can see also the oil, man, they always replace, you know, it's mm -hmm. not like that really dark old oil. It's, it's, it just tastes the pastry, not oily. The best thing of all time. This so is the good, best empanada right? ever. Yeah, yeah. One last bite, guys. I can't eat this whole thing. We still have a lot of food to eat today. Mm. I'm saving the rest for later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Leftover. Sempre forem comer pastel, toma cuidado. Dá esse mordidão e vê o. Muito bom. Caramba. Uau. Tá com a pimentinha? Ué, sempre. Eu quero. Será que é muito forte? Não sei. Tem que provar pra saber, ó. My man. Delicious. So good. So the pastel was 24 reais, so roughly right under 5 US dollars for that massive pie. I mean, so delicious. And the experience here is this, how tight it is. We're on the bar. You are passing behind us, in front of us, you can see them making them. She doesn't stop making pasteles. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Pastel two. machine. Pastel machine, for sure. <laughs> she just makes them, throws it in the oil, and they take it to the back. And there's actually, you know, a seating area in the back if you want to sit down at a table. But we like this. It was just cozier, you know, more local, right? Oh, this is awesome. Oh, now we're gonna eat some hot dog and uh, some more stuff. Let's see. Let's go, ready, ready for a hot dog, local hot dog. Hot dog. Yeah? Yeah, Curitiba is well known for like a good hot dog as well. I'll explain to you guys when we get there. Let's go. We had a massive hot dog in Sao Paulo, but that hot dog was like mashed potatoes, regular hot dog, nice bun, very fluffy, not so filling. This one he's saying is a monster, another monster. Usually they don't do with mashed potato. Just different style. That's it, good. This is another huge video. Great neighborhood. I love Kauai. No, dude, Hawaii is the best. Hawaii is amazing. The food. Kauai. Rafa, you're gonna love uh, Hawaii. All right, guys, quick change of plans. We aren't going to eat the hot dog yet because it opens in one hour. So we came to a traditional, really authentic, famous bar. Casa Velha Bar. Casa Velha Bar. Casa Velha means uh, old house. Old house bar. That's it, guys. It looks like an old house, right? Yeah. That's why I call Casa Velha. Casa Velha. Yes. Let's go, man. Bom dia. Bom dia. Tudo bem? Como vai? Tudo bem? Inside ou outside? Whatever you want, come inside. Look at this, nice bar. And they have beer, huh? Cerveza. Cerveza de Curitiba. Yeah? Draft beer. This one's, for example, uh, from Campo de Jordão, which is the Sao Paulo County. They have Eisenbahn, Petra, Black One, Mauser beer. Have a lot of good beers. This is basically like a sports bar, okay? Come in, get a beer, get a snack, like a croquette. We're gonna get a croqueta, and I'm gonna try a delicious beer, a local beer, and it's called Buddy Brewery. They have an American pale ale. It belongs to the uh, town near here that belongs to Paraná State called Colombo. Okay. Colombo. Awesome, let's try one. Okay. On draft. On okay, draft right on here. draft. Draft beer. Draft beer is the best. Here, here we call Shopee. Shopee. Yeah, like C H O double P. Obrigado. This is my type of place. Awesome. So we got a draft beer from a local brewery called Buddy Brewery. And this is an AP 
A, right? So American Pale Ale. It's just American style, you know? We, we revolutionized the IPA into an American style IPA. And this is it, 6.5% alcohol. Oh, that's amazing. Mm, so good, hoppy. So it's basically like a, I would say it's, you know, it's like an American IPA, right? But not cloudy, very crisp, light, 6.5%, so not super light in alcohol, but just right. This is more like a sessionable APA. Oh, it's good. Mmm, so good. Love this. So if you're German or you're into German culture, definitely come out here to Curitiba and try beers. Beers are everywhere. Lots of breweries in the area. Tomorrow we're actually going to a town called Blumenau. It's in the next day, Santa Catarina. But that's like a German town. They actually have an Oktoberfest every single year. They started like in 1865 or something. And yeah, good beer. Always. Oh man. People don't know about the Brazilian beers, but they're phenomenal. Hey. Muito bom. Muito bom. Saúde. That means cheers in Portuguese. Nothing better than a nice cold draft beer. All right, they have so many beers to try, so he recommended I try another beer, a dark beer. It's called Petra. Look at this beer. Wow. Mmm. Oh man, this is almost like a between a porter and a stout. I don't know what's in it. A little bit sweet, right? Yeah, it's super sweet actually. Super sweet. Super sweet. So this is like a German style, like it's probably like a dunkel, right? Oh, oh, this is this is the best with like a pork, you know, like a cutlet, like a super fried pork cutlet, man. Oh my god, amazing. And obviously, if you don't drink, you still come here because they have food. We're about to try some delicious, thick, round croquettes. Oh man, love dark beers. Petra from Santa Catarina. All right, so what's the name of this thing? This is called bolinho, bola cheia, which okay. means like a full ball, or like a ball, yeah, full ball. Full ball. Full ball, so which it's, is a croqueta. It's croqueta, it's basically. Ground beef and uh, provolone cheese. And some dough, obviously. Some dough, yeah. And then like, they fry it. Yeah, usually flour, right? Exactly. With egg and. It looks amazing. We have some sauce here, looks like mustard, and we have a spicy sauce, and I'm gonna go yes. with this. But first, let me show you this. Break it open. See how the cheese oozes out. Whoa. My friend here is jumping on it too fast. Sorry, I'm starving. <laughs> I know. It's so addicting. I'm gonna put some of the spice in this. Here. Cheers. Okay, cheers. I'll get some here. Okay, cool. Super spicy. Aquele momento tá aquele de pimentinha. Mmm. Very nice. Very nice. Mmm. The cheese just flows right through like lava, oozing, gooey. The only problem about this croqueta, it's impossible to eat only one. You know, it's like mm. it's like a snack. You know, like non-stop. It is truly addictive. Mm -hmm. So basically, this pairs amazing with the beer. Mm -hmm. I'm having water. Mm. Good. Wow, so good. To be honest, I'm so stuffed from the pastel. From the pastel. It was like a meal. I mean, it was a meal, man. It was a meal. I only ate half and I was like, whoa. Yes. But this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Very mushy, fried, perfect comfort food to mix with craft beer. Yes. Muito bom, my friend. Muito bom. Muito bom. Whoa. Delicious. I think my friend's not happy. He ate five balls and we still have a hot dog to go. Crazy. I had two, but with the beer, and the beer's heavy. And this one's super tasty, very sweet, malty. Again, mixed between a port and a stout. All right, we ready? Hot dog? Okay, salchicha. Thank you. Obrigado, a la próxima. Thank you. Did you see this the other day? Tell me. Like some private, so cool, look. Amazing. The other one. And look how All it's right. giving the, the beer uh, advertised. That's awesome. So it's like a.
So this is like a private dining room, exactly. but I like it. it's like rustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an old beer house, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. So cool. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm not hungry, but I guess I gotta eat. <laughs> Almost there? Almost there. Uh, actually, one minute away. One minute. One minute until I eat a hot dog. Yes. <laughs> to be honest, I don't love hot dogs, but it's such a big thing here in Brazil big, that I have to try and, everywhere. And, and it's a big thing in Curitiba. Yeah. It's a big thing. That they're, they're very proud of their hot dog. Uh, I'll see oh, you. right there. Is this it? Yeah, yeah. Colombia guy. Okay, well, I'm filming. Is that not good? No, no, it's good. And this is it. That's good. From night. Okay. Dog do gringo. Gringo. <laughs> okay, here we are at Gringo Doggy Colombia. It's one of the most famous hot dog in Curitiba. Man, the, the difference... Uh, between like the hot dog from Curitiba to the rest of Brazil. First of all, uh, sausage, they call Vina. Vina means, uh, that comes from the word Vienna, right? So you never say salsicha or linguiça, you always say Vina, right? It comes with bread, tomato, uh, onions, uh, french fries, and the other difference is the, the yucca flour, the yucca flour, and then ketchup and mayo, okay, that's it. Look at this. My friends, look at this amazing hot dog. Wow. I like it because they even toasted it, right? Yes. They like squeeze it together. Beautiful. And we have a few different sauces here, so I think this is, a, this is not spicy. This, this is, is spicy. pineapple. Yeah. So spicy, pineapple. This is kind of like sweet sour. And this one's sweet and sour? Yes. Go, go with the spicy one. Okay. All right, so spicy. A little bit of spice. This one is spicy and the other one is spicy. This is uh, ahi. All of three is Colombia sauce. So this is ahi. Okay. Tomato with uh, chili. Nice. The other two ones are uh, pineapple, plain pineapple and pineapple with chili. So they're like the, the real street food. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it's like Macpen, huh? The salsa. It's salsa. Yeah, ahi. I'll put some of this on top. Yeah. Wow. Very, very maximum. The guy's from Colombia originally, mm -hmm. the owner, right? Yeah, Colombia loves the hot dogs. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Good. The big difference, you know, the Curitiba hot dog, they put the cassava flour, right? It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's crunchy. Mm -hmm. It's sweet. Well, that's sweet. This is spicy. I love the bread too. It's yeah. Like toasted, just ripe, a little soft in the middle, right? But on the outside, crispy. Not crispy, yeah. but like cooked. You know? Yeah, and not uh, like toasted, right? And not, not, not heavy bread, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. I am full, my man. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to end the, the day, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, man. To me, 
the hot dog from São Paulo and Curitiba are the best in, in Brazil. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. The some more sweet ah. guys, some more sweet. Ooh, look at that. Amazing. What a way to end the day, huh? Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I was telling you the difference between the, the hot dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, Curitiba usually they put the, the cassava flour and they call the sausage vina, yeah. right? So that's the, the main difference. Okay. Close up. Pô, é diferente, Canon. Obrigado. 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 Yeah. I'm a little bit. Yeah. Had a lot of coffee. Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from Curitiba, Brazil. Today we are driving five hours to Florianopolis. On the way, we're stopping in Blumenau, like a German city. Lots of beer, lots of German food. I'm excited, I'm pumped. Pumped you, and I'm ready to roll to the road, man. Let's go. Three hours, Blumenau, right? Three hours, yeah. Rock and roll. Let's go. So what are we gonna see on this three hour journey? Like a place to eat, right? Maybe, maybe. I think so. It's early. It's early, but maybe like early lunch, like by 10, 30, 11 in the morning. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Probably that truck ran into the red light. The truck ran the red light so. and ran into the bus. Yes. And there's actually... <laughs> or the bus ran into the red light. I right? mean, it's we insane. Don't know. That was yeah. insane. We don't know. Oh my God. I'm actually, I've seen a lot more accidents on this trip than I've ever seen in my life. Yes. People drive a little while, people right? People drive a little while and people drive very aggressive, you know? Brazilian people are well known for like very friendly people, but once they, they are in the car, man, I don't know what happened, it changed, you know? So we had an amazing 36 hours here in Curitiba. We explored nonstop, we ate a lot of food. Basically, it's a foodie city, right? Foodie yes. city. Tons of food. I mean, in terms of attractions, um, unfortunately for us, we were there on a Monday, so a few things were closed that we really wanted to see, like the, the Central Market, you know, we saw the town gardens. We got a lot of rain. We got a lot of rain. Some cold. Some cold. I mean, the Four Seasons. Beautiful city, though. Definitely highly suggest you come oh, out here. Absolutely, man. If you're going to do a road trip from Sao Paulo down to Florianopolis, stop here for at least a night. I would say two full nights because of the road. It takes five hours to get from Sao Paulo to here. Yeah. And five hours to get to Florianopolis from here. So it's a long way if you're going to go straight from Sao Paulo to Florianopolis. Some people, you know, most people drive. Uh, yeah. Sorry, fly. It's also like a co coffee town, right, man? It's like for coffee lovers. Yeah. They 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 make good coffee, right? So yeah, it's a place to come to eat and uh, explore the nature. It, it's it's fun. Definitely worth it to visit, man. I highly recommend as well. And like a true Brazilian, he's having pan de queijo and coffee. <laughs> this one is okay, kind of dry, but fair enough. It's called San Jose dos Pinhais. There's like a huge Italian influence right and they also have a really good Italian food and a lot of farmers you know huge in agriculture yeah so this is like the main road to get out of the city and then go to Blumenau it's a uh, four lanes four lanes all commercial all around us lots of vehicles like lots of dealerships for different uh, car yeah. dealerships fast food, change. fast food change outlets and that's basically what this is for a little while until we completely get out and then we're gonna get a lot of green. Yes, a lot of green, a lot of waterfalls. Man, it's beautiful this part of the country, you know? It's amazing. And I didn't mention earlier, Curitiba is the capital of the state of Par Paraná. 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 And we're gonna enter the state of Santa Catarina. Yes, Santa Catarina, man, is well known for uh, the all blondie, right? Most of the people. And then we get into like uh, more into like Portuguese uh, influence in German as well, because of Blumenau, right? 30 minutes outside of Curitiba and we are on a massive highway going through a jungle. It's like a forest, mountain, lots of hills, lots of lush, green, super green. Again, it rains like crazy out here. Yes, it's so a lot of green, man. And like, what can we expect for the next two hours here? Man, I think we're just gonna see like a lot of uh, places to eat, like uh, churrascaria. So every 30 minutes, there's like a gas station with a steakhouse, uh, a lot of green, and on the right-hand side of the road, there are a lot of waterfalls, you know, that we can stop. 
We're probably not going to stop today because it's raining cold. And on the left hand side, in a few minutes, we will be able to see also the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. Now we're driving through the forest. This reminds me of Florida at certain points where the road sort of splits. So, you know, we're going this way, it's a one way. The other part of the road is on like the other side of this hill across from the jungle. Um, German feeling similar to Florida in certain parts because, you know, obviously in Florida, no hills and always sunny. It's actually, the sun's coming out now. Yes. Really beautiful. But eventually we're gonna see the ocean. Yeah, we're expecting left. good weather for the next uh, three days, actually. Yeah? Yeah, so, so it's So everything in Florida now is gonna be sunny. Yes. Oh man, I can't wait. German food, German beer, and then we're gonna have seafood all day for like three days. All day. Oh God, seafood. That's one thing people uh Shrimp, lobster. People don't talk fish. about the seafood in Brazil, and you have a huge coastline. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Actually, north northeast of Brazil, south, uh, they talk a lot about seafood. Rio, we have to import, which is kind of far, you know, from the capital, you know. But we're still eating, but it's expensive, you know. But here it's quite cheap. You'd be so impressive, like so cheap, you know, like so affordable, you know. Yeah, it's just a place for you to stop to get like food and drinks, coffee, maybe some meat for breakfast. Why not? If they have found the queijo. I'm down. Probably the kids, and they also have some souvenirs. Look at that. Like, yeah. Oh, great. Let's do this. I'm hungry. Oh, this is awesome. So, if you want to buy, uh, I guess this is what you use to like grind up the cassava, right? So, these are skins, huh? Yeah. Cow hides. Cow, how much for these cow hides? 550 like a hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah. It's actually, it's actually really sad. The cow hides. Yeah. Let's go get some food. Let's go. Mask on. See what they got in here. Okay, so it's a market. It's not just a place to eat. So they sell chips, nuts, chocolates. Oh, really nice. Oh, I love this. Look at this, dude. This is cool. This? This piece of wood? Signs. So these are signs for like the different uh, football teams, right? Yeah. And if you guys didn't know, this area, they produce a lot of wine. And here they have huge jugs of wine. So vino de mesa. So, you know, house wine. And then they also have over here, Vino Colonial, so this is more like a, you know, fruit, honey wine. I don't know exactly what this is. So I guess it's more like Aguardiente. So, you know, liquor. Man, here it's like a lot of food, a lot of souvenir. Look, a lot of bags of uh, candy. So instead of Chapolines, they have candies, right? <laughs> but it reminds a lot the Chapolines bag. Look, I would love to have lunch, but lunch is only at 11, you know? They also have the, the tamales, man. Do you want to try the tamales? Okay. Yeah, pain pamonha. Vê uma doce, então, por favor. Perfect. So, Brazilian yeah, tamales. And over here, they have lots of cheese for sale and they have salami. The salami smells amazing. This is picante. It's picante. Picante, no. Is it? No? Creo que no. Looks good, though. Look at this. Huge. So, it's 37, so like six, seven dollars for this. Oh, no, it's 24. Salami Italiano. Si, eso es como chicharron. Oh, it's like chicharron? Man, these are like all the boards of the... some of the main teams from the south uh, region of Brazil as well as Sao Paulo team. It costs $10, I don't think it's heavy. I think if you feel like, take it as a souvenir, you know. 10 bucks? Yeah, it, it feels a little light. Yeah, it feels light. Uh, maybe I take one. For 10 bucks? I mean, what a deal. And they also have candies, I mean... What a cool stuff, huh? Yeah, oh, look cool. at look at the barrels here. Yeah. Whoa. It's pretty cool. Reserva artisanal. Is that? Can we try a drink? I think so. Yeah. Let me check. So this is not wine. This is cachaça, which is sugarcane liquor. Very very similar to like tequila, rocky. I mean, a little more smoky, so like more tequila style. Okay, my friends, I'm trying cachaça, cachaça, cachaça. Oh, mm, yeah, this one's like flavorful. Honey. Mm, got the oak, got the oak barrel there too. I mean, magic. Oh, the smell is intense. Yeah, usually it's honey. I mean, it's pretty intense though. For the morning, gets the blood flowing. Take a seat, Rafa. Come on. Oh, it's tough. Ooh, that's strong. That's very strong. My right, man, I'm gonna take this one though. SPFC. That one's awesome. Pode separar esse aqui do São Paulo, por favor. Ele vai levar. They also have a lot of local honey, artisanal honey, right here. 
They want to take one of these for my mother-in-law. She loves honey. I mean, I love it too, but this is what she asked for for every trip. Bring me honey. Oh, look at this one. This one, the color is so nice. All right, the food is ready. Let's eat tamale, Brazilian style. So what's the difference? Well, here usually we don't have like fillet, right? So we have the sweet version and the salt version. And this is the sweet version. Yeah, pamonha is originally from the middle of Brazil, in the state of Goiás. Yeah, it's very hot. Always. Kench. All right, guys. Tamale. Mmm. They like some sweet cornbread. Mmm. Oh, amazing, my man. Super hot. Very dense. Straight corn. It feels like it's a like exactly that cornbread right this one doesn't have fillings oh man it's so good i'm a big fan of corn corn all day pamonia mmm it's sweet and now chocolate milk chocolate milk very sweet oh my god this is like you heard like this sweet sugar right yes but it's good right mm -hmm. Yes, very thick, right? So it's, it's just like a, a regular chocolate milk. I'm not gonna compare it to that much because I haven't had chocolate milk like in 20 years, to be honest. I've had like hot milk, but uh, hot chocolate, but not chocolate milk. It pairs well together, right? Yeah, you know, a little bite. Mm. Oh yeah, this is fantastic. Your turn, bro. Very hot. I like this combination. Mm. This is a uh, preface of champions right here. Mm -hmm. Very sweet sabor original. So this is from Santa Catarina, the state of Santa Catarina. So you have to try when you come here. It's called chocolate. Oh man, I haven't had chocolate milk in so long. Very important. Always out of the glass bottle. Always. The plastic one, no good. Okay. It's basically cornbread. Mm. With the bomb, no? Mm. Wow. All right. Last piece. Ooh, still super hot. Very good. Mm. <laughs> Very different from the original one. Yeah. In Mexico, no? Mm -hmm. mm. And I have to flush it all down with some coffee. Amazing. The best coffee in the world, in Brazil. Well, I can't really say that, but it is good. Mm. With no sugar, no cream, you get the full taste of the coffee beans. Wow, another great coffee, dude. Amazing. Muito bom. Let's not forget this. Yes. How good this is. Like I said before, my mother-in-law loves this. I have to get her one every trip. Dulce de leche de Brazil. Muy rico. If you guys didn't know, Dulce de leche is huge in Brazil. Obviously, Colombia, uh, Venezuela, all these Latin countries, but wow, look at this. This is amazing. A dollar fifty for this. So it's like little packs, huh? All right. So total price for the food, you know, the wood carving and the honey is fifteen fifty, right? Fifteen fifty. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. That's right. Obrigado. Wow. Amigo, obrigado. Hola. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Awesome. Yeah, it's actually a little heavy. I thought it was going to be lighter. Yeah. It's a poco pesante. Un poco. Un poco. Si. But I think this is for my nephew. My nephew is a huge soccer player. Huge. Miami. Inter Miami. Alright, let's continue this journey to Blumenau. That was great. Dude, amazing. Amazing, huh? Yeah, what a spot. I love it. I, I always love to stop in those places, you know, when you're doing like a, a road trip. So we just entered the state of Santa Catarina. Santa Catarina State, yeah. What is the state about? Man, beautiful, a lot of beaches, uh, mountains, waterfall. It's just amazing, you know, like huge German cologne. Amazing. 
I love this state, man. It's so beautiful. Like the, the scenery, you know, like get out of the main road that was leading to Florianopolis and now we get into the countryside of Santa, Cat Santa Catarina State on, the, on our way to Blumenau. One more hour. Yeah, so we have one more hour to go. We're on a very, very narrow road in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's hard because there's trucks in front of you, you're trying to pass, there's cars coming, so you have to go really, really slow. I mean, we're trying to get to the next, uh, 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 careful. <laughs> so on this road, we're just passing by small little towns, not even towns, they're more like villages. They look very old school German. They always have like a church in the center. Yeah, like agriculture. Agriculture, exactly. And over here, what is this? Oh my God, look at this. Cemetery. Cemetery. Whoa. Very colorful. Very colorful. One more hour. On this road? Yeah, on this road, like 66 kilometers. And the only reason it's taking an hour is because there's so much traffic due to yeah, all the trucks. Bumps, right? Yeah, too many pajos. So many pajos. Like in Brazil, uh, there are like different types of name, right? Here's Lombada. In Bahia, we call Saliencia or Redutor de Velocidade. Okay. Yeah, man, many ways to call. Quebra mola. Quebra mola. Quebra mola. But look at this. So you have beautiful. this beautiful, like, it's like a rice plantation almost, yeah, it, right? Yeah, it is rice. It is it rice. Is rice. Yeah. So like rice, and then over there you have beautiful palm trees, yeah. mountains, and all the houses are very typical German style. All right. agriculture out here, right? Yes. A lot, of, a lot of cows, pork. You have to pass these trucks. They are making us go so slow. Yes, we made it. Yes. Nice. So this is a, a fruit stand. Oh, Coco Verde. I love Coco Verde. Yeah, they have orange, potato. Bom dia. Bom dia. What do you feel like? Yeah. Maybe juice? Juice. Tem, tem suco? Suco não tem ainda. Só gar... coco gelado. Ah, pode ser um coco. What are these? Uh, biscuit. Oh, água. Ah, So we're going to get some coconut water and I'm going to try some cachaça. Ah, absolutely. Because this ah. one looks amazing. Oh, no, she wants to show you some. Oh. Vino. Cachaça. Oh. Wow. Cachaça. Vinho. Wow, look at this. Look at all this wine. This is all local wine. Vino local, no? Yeah. Local vino. And then here we have cachaça. So cachaça, sugar cane, liquor. Cachaça de carvalho, cachaça pura. Cachaça com cana de açúcar dentro. Ah, sim? Sim. Uau. Vinho de primeira linha, as conservas, pepino, palmito, Uau. mel. Mel. As, os licores, ó. Licor de maracujá. Oh, so they also have spices, they have wine, they have cachaça. I'm gonna have a coco. Eu... Obrigado. Nada. Uou, pesante. É. <laughs> Abacaxi. Ok. Café, canela, banana, passas e jabuticaba. Grapa também. Questa. Essa é a grapa. Grapa. Essa? Sim. Oh, yes. Try another cachaça. E, e, esta é qual? Ca... Essa é de café. De café. Oh. Muito essa, bom. Essa é muito boa. Essa é muito bom? É. Banana. Isso. Oh. Oh. Boa, né? É banana é, é melhor. Melhor? Melhor. <risos> é quanto custa? 20. 20? 20 reais. 20 reais. Isso. Ok. É inteira lá. Inteira lá. Isso. Ei, hey, I'm gonna buy this one. Uno per me. Um banana? Sim, um banana. Four dollars. Yeah, yeah. Four dollars. the whole bottle? Yeah, oh, one shot. No, four dollars for the whole for bottle. For the whole bottle? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, coco. I want a coco. Oh, David. Oh, yeah, David. Well, see, David. David. Yeah, David. Too. David, too. Oh. Hey, obrigado. Obrigado. Oh, um, um prazer. Um prazer. Nossa, muito legal. Uh, agora, falo um pouco de. Português. Não, Sim. Mas ele desenrola bem. Ele fala espanhol fluente. Sim. Sim Italiano ou espanhol? Ah. This is like my German grandmother. Minha avó alemã. Minha avó alemã. É? This is the best. Água de coco. 
Agua de coco, ¿no? Cachaza. Yeah. She, she got so excited to show all her livery. I know, I know. Yeah, someone's produce. They they buy from like a third part. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Helping the community. Exactly. Yeah. So if you want to try cachaza, you can try like 10 different variations right here. I'm buying this bottle. This is the one with banana. 20 real. So that is four US dollars. Literally four US dollars. Yes. Amazing. Muito bom. Obrigado. Prazer en nós. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try one more cachaça. Prova uma cachaça, people. Yeah, outra. Jabuticaba. Yeah, jabuticaba. There's no meaning because it's a Brazilian fruit. So this is a Brazilian fruit. It's called jabuticaba. Oh it, my god, it, it's it, so it, sweet. Yeah, it belongs to the. A banana is better, right? Eh? Yes, sí, yes, sí, banana is better. Yes, yes, yes. I think this one's scary. What's the verde? Hortelã. 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 Quer um pouquinho? Mint. Mint. Oh, why not? Why not? They're too nice. Mint. Oh, forte. Forte? Yeah. Banana melhor. Banana melhor. I don't love mint. <laughs> this tastes like one of those mint candies. <laughs> and obviously, besides the cassava and the wine, they also have these huge watermelons. Look at this watermelon, pineapple. Oh, the coco, wine, really incredible spot. This is the best part about road trips, you get to see things like this you never see if you flew into a city. Always support the locals, buy products. You know, for me, I'm all about supporting locals. That bottle is going to my dad, and my friend here is the best. Muito obrigado. Se especiale. Obrigado, obrigado, obrigado. Everything okay? Everything's perfect. So it was 35 total, I paid 20 for the bottle and then an extra, so basically a dollar for each coco. Yes. Good deal, seven dollars total. Support the locals, always. All right guys, it's the Peter Blumen now. Can't wait, I'm starving now. Now I need to eat some German food. Dude, I can't believe this stop. Yeah, man, I'm like her, I cry too, seriously. It's, it's for real, man, it's life. No, she, she started crying, we're all crying. Yes. We just met each other and we're like, we're like family, it's crazy. Yes, yes. She was so nice, so nice. So nice. Man, so happy that you help, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. All right, what a day. We've driven for three hours and we're about to enter Blumenau, German town founded in 1865. I'm very, very excited. I cannot wait to drink some German beer, eat some German food, and then after this, we're going to Florianopolis to experience the Ibiza of South America. Lots of seafood, beaches, it's going to be incredible. But yeah, today's journey was awesome. We tried, what was the food we tried? We tried the pamonha. Pamonha. Kind of like Brazilian tamale, Exactly, right? like, like cornbread. Yeah. We also bought some souvenirs yes. in that shop. Cachaça. Some cachaça, I tried some cachaça twice. Coconut water. Coconut water. And everybody's been extremely friendly. And as you can see, everybody looks very German. Germans came here about 150 years ago. They Correct. started entering. Also, after World War II, more Germans came here. So it's an extremely high German descendant population in Santa Catarina. Correct. Awesome. And the good news is that the sun just came out. So it's good. Perfect. Warm. I mean, this is amazing. Tropical, very lush, perfect weather. The air quality, you cannot believe amazing. how good it is. I know. So good. So good. Today, I am so excited to visit this beautiful town. It was founded in the year 1865 by German colonists, and they're famous for their Oktoberfest every single September, October, right? So today what we're gonna do, is we're gonna try some beer, German food, we're gonna explore the town. We're starting off right here at Beerland, which is one of the microbreweries. Unfortunately, they don't allow visitations to the actual brewery, but they do have a convenience store. They have a lot of different beers. They have Pilsen, Strong Ales. What else do they have? IPAs, lots of good stuff. We're gonna buy some beer, we're gonna come outside and we're gonna drink it, because unfortunately, you know, during these times, we can't do it inside. Let's go. Follow me. Awesome. Right here, you can see how beer is made, right? The process. It basically gives you generalization. Malt, hops, yeast, and water. They have all their beers for sale. So these are all 12 packs. Keep walking this way. They have merchandise. So you have hats over here. You have a growler, really nice growler. Beautiful. Keep coming, keep coming. Love this one, by the way. This is really nice. Nice glassware. And here we have their beers. Pilsen, 
Session IPA, American IPA, Vienna, strong and stout, really affordable, only three reais, which is like, you know, 80 cents for this beer. Same thing here, these are a little more expensive, obviously stronger beers, way more time, darker beers take time to make. So I'm gonna try their stout, one dollar for this, and maybe I try their Pilsen, why not, right? So I'll do a little bit, a little combo, right? Super light lager, super strong ale. And over here, we have the merch. So I don't wanna drink in a plastic cup, I just don't do that, and I wanna buy a souvenir. Probably gonna give it to my dad, cause he's the man. So I'm gonna take one of these, and I'm gonna take one of these. Really affordable again. 11 reais, so two bucks. And over here, $3 for this. So total, I think I'm spending like $6 to drink two beers and take the glassware. Awesome, let's go pay. The total is 36 for two glasses, two beers, and my friend got like some grape juice. Is that, that's like $7, really affordable. What do you got? Thank you. And quickly, let me tell you, so they, all, they have Pilsen, Bison, Vienna, IPA, Strong Ale, Stout. The Strong Ale is really strong, 9%. I'm not going with that. I haven't had lunch yet. I can't deal with that right now. And 9% at 9%. this time? No, at this time. Epic stomach? No way. Obrigado. Uh, all right, let's go outside and let's try some beers. So this is the Pilsen. Pilsen. Right, like 5%? Mmm, nice, refreshing. It's actually very like. And it smells good, huh? It smells good, it's like a nice it little good. fragrance. It's a, it's a little bitter, but it's nice. And, you know, crispy, Pilsen. If you guys don't know about the beer world, you got lagers, which are bottom fermentation. You know, ales are up, or top fermentation, and Pilsen comes from lagers. Mmm, smell it. My friend doesn't uh, drink. Yeah, but I'm gonna have a. a oh, juice. Grape juice. This is good. And always, always drink it in a glass, never a plastic cup. Yes. That ruins the taste. Exactly. And it has to be chilled like this. And the good thing is that because we're at the brewery, it's probably the best place to have the can. Obviously, if it's on draft, even better, but they probably just canned it recently. Yeah, and I would say for any beverage like coffee as well, man, having a lot of plastic, mm. it tastes plastic. No, right? it's gross. Yeah. Well, it's good. All right, I'm going to go to the next one. Chocolate. Let me pour a little bit more. Pour a little more, yeah. Let's finish this beer. This is my favorite. Stouts. Stouts are the best. If you guys don't know about stouts, that stems from porters. Just a stronger, dark beer. Very chocolatey. Yeah. Espresso. Coffee. Yeah. It's light. It's yeah, not yeah. bitter. Only yeah. like 5%, I think, or 6% alcohol. So not like crazy strong. Yeah. Nothing like the strong ale they have inside. But it's a nice, refreshing beer. Some people don't like drinking this in hot weather like this. I personally enjoy it. It's just a heavier beer, you know. Yeah. This is very, this is very German. It's Salute. actually, it's actually very Eng English, but on yes. good. Saúde. Mmm. Wow. Different, no? Oaty, like like oats. Oats. And a little milky, almost yeah. like a milk stout. It says like really oaty, creamy, mm. right? Yeah, creamy. Salud. Salud. We're having uh, grape juice. Sabor Max Fruta. Uva. Uva. Mm. This is actually the best way to start the day. Grape juice. Salud. Salud. <laughs> Cheers. Prost. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to go straight to Blumenau now. We're going to look for a restaurant. We're going to eat some delicious German food. Man, usually it's like Kassler, right? Like it's uh, pork uh, uh, chops and pork leg. Bye bye, Beerland. <laughs> Beerland is actually about 25 minutes outside of Blumenau. We're taking the back road to get there. The highway is to the right. It's not really a highway. It's more like just a fast, you know, road. It's not in the hills. Like Pacific Highway, right? Yeah, like a Pacific Highway. Yeah. And this is more hilly. Uh, it's really winding roads, but beautiful German buildings everywhere. All wooden style houses. This is really unique. I've never seen this. Even in Germany, you don't see this because this is like a hundred years. Yes. Like old traditions. Old. Yeah, like this part, like very agriculture, right? Like kind of like farmer place. You should come, man. If you have the opportunity to attend Oktoberfest in October, please come. It's worth it. And what's really amazing is that in Curitiba, it was like cold and wet, like cold, for real cold. Yeah. Now, I am sweating with a t-shirt. 
Super it is hot. like super tropical, super 20, hot. 20, 20 and, we, and when we get the front up, it's gonna be really hot on yes. the beach. We're in Blumenau. Beautiful day, man. 31 Celsius now. As we enter Blumenau, you can see we're on the main road, commercial, basically just like warehouses, a few different buildings, but historical center is still about 10 minutes away. Yeah. Just straight down, right? Yes, like almost four kilometers. Wow, the amount of blonde people here is insane. The majority. I've never seen a town like this in Latin America, this many blondes. Like every single girl is super, super white and blonde. Incredible. Man, where's the food? I'm hungry. Three minutes away. Three minutes, it? It's in. And here we are in Blumenau. And this restaurant in front of us looks like an old German house. Awesome. Can't wait. So it's like a beer garden German restaurant. Yes, let's go. We're ready to eat, man. Let's do it. Thank you. <laughs> so this is an amazing building. It's a beer garden. It's a restaurant. They have buffet for lunch. They also have a few things at la carte, which we're going to try. Really German traditional things, including sausage. And Kostler. And Kostler. Which is the park leg. Like. And draft beer. And draft beer. I mean, this building's beautiful. It's like, it's been 90 years. It was the first martinery hospital okay. in Blumenau. Amazing. So it has a lot of history. Very colonial, very German. This is a beer garden. It's nice to have like this long, huge table yeah. where you can share your meal with others. Exactly. And it's great to be here, man. Yeah. I'm so happy. From outside, it literally looks like a building in Bavaria with a beer garden. Everybody here eating delicious food, Absolutely. drinking some beer. We're gonna go in the kitchen right now, we're gonna see how they make some dishes. Bruno, let's go. Really traditional, authentic German style building. Right here we have the buffet. Everybody's sitting around. They have these cool hats. Looks like Swiss hats. Very nice. You! Lady is the boss here. Bom dia, bom dia. To the bon, to the bang. Okay, they're about to start cooking our food. Before that, we're gonna see them pour some beer. Some cerveja, oh no, from Blumenau. So they have Pilsen, right? And this is, oh, this is IPA. Look, and then they have a Villa Weiss beer. Oh, it's great. This is all on draft, I like it. So this one's IPA? Yeah, does it. So this is a Capivara, so that's like the rodent here, right? In, the, in Brazil, huge rodent, the biggest rodent in the world, right? So it's a little IPA, 6.6% from uh, Cervejaria Blumenau. So that is like the main microbrewery. Can I try here, okay? Oh, so tasty. Oh, hoppy. Fantastic, not too bitter. Now I'm in Blumenau. Okay, now we're talking. <laughs> Cervejaria Blumenau. This is the little IPA, delicious. And right here we have the Villa Weiss beer. Weiss beer, I love it. This is real German style. Huge. Mm. Oh, delicioso. Wow, it's like cloudy, mm, a little creamy. What am I doing here? It's amazing. It's like I just landed in Germany, dude, and I'm in Latin America. It's amazing. Cool. It's amazing, dude. I can't even believe this. So friendly. Hey, you're the man, dude. You're the man. Are you joining me? Join me. It's too big. It's too big. I gotta say, I haven't had vice beer in a long time. I love it. It's so, it's like a traditional beer from Germany. Obviously, it's their style. Wow. It's so good. And this is like a what? A liter? <laughs> ready? The, the castle is already there, man. Wow, we are seeing how they make so many different amazing German dishes here. So authentic. So authentic. We got sauerkraut. We have two different sausages. We have like the white sausage from like Bavaria. Yeah. And we have the regular one which I love. Order. Then this one is? Eisenben. Eisenben. We have pork leg, fried. Fried. And then we have the pork cutlet. Swiss, right? Yeah, vinegar schnitzel, right? Yeah. So. And uh, with mashed potato and with mushrooms. Oh, the mushrooms. Yeah, the cre with cream milk. I mean, right? the aroma in this kitchen is yeah. so good. Look at this. Look oh, yeah. yeah.
I've never seen a Wiener Schnitzel this amazing. Yes. Having the freaking mushrooms, that creamy so brownish crazy. sauce. Oh, so tempting. Let's dig in. This it's with time. beer. Hey, <laughs> over the gallon. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm ready. I'm ready, man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, Let's, go. Let's go. Got my two beers. Let's go meet with Rafa. Let's have some beers, some food. It's gonna be epic. Dino Sabes. Crazy. Oh, it's so good. Obrigado. All right, my friends, we are ready to eat. We got our beers, and let me show you a trick. So the reason they invented these beers in Germany is because back in like the 1500s, people were poisoning people, and they said, you know what, you can't poison me anymore. Let's split this. And the beer is supposed to jump into the other beer, and we drink. Well, you can't drink. Yeah, but. Mmm. <laughs> Look at this monster. One, one liter, huh? One, dude, dude, they're crazy. <laughs> and, keep, and keep cold, right? It stays cold, really yeah, cold. it stays cold. And then right here we have amazing sausage. We have pasta, which is something very different. It's a German pasta. Over here we have the schnitzel, but schnitzel with mushrooms and like this creamy, delicious sauce on top. Over here we have mashed potatoes and the... Eisbein. Eisbein, which is basically like a, a pork leg. Fried. fried. It's it's basically almost like pork rinds, right? Yeah, with uh, mashed with potato. Similar. We're gonna split it in half. We gotta slowly eat, right? Boom, 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 boom. Wow, man, it looks amazing. When we talked about the trip, and he was like, "Man, it's a German town. They have Oktoberfest. We have to go." I was like, "I'm in." We I love the route. Now. I love the route. Yeah, this route is the epic. route. Yeah. yeah, sorry, the route. Yeah, no, it's fine. But yeah, most, yeah, yeah. most people don't even know about this route. Yeah, yeah. A few Brazilians, man. But few outsiders, Brazilians. foreigners, they don't know. They don't know. They no might heard knows. about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. But you're saying most people do know about the Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah. Let's split this guy. Let's do it. Because if not, beautiful. So I'm gonna cut this guy in half, and then another half because this is big. They gave yes. us an epic. Portion, huh? Yes. Sauerkraut all day. Sauerkraut. This is the best. I'm a big fan. So if you guys don't know about sauerkraut, it's basically just cabbage, right? Cabbage pickles, right? Mm -hmm. Pickle cabbage. Yeah. Mmm. Mm. Potato. Potato. Get as much as you yeah, want, dude. Here. It's never ending, right? Yeah, so much mashed potato. Oh my have. god, they love mashed potatoes in Germany. They yes, love it. They love it. I mean, and this is exactly how you eat in Germany. I've been to Frankfurt. I've been to Munich. Where else? Berlin. I've been to many cities and this is very similar. Obviously it changes in every city. Yeah. But this is like the staple dishes, right? Yeah, I had this experience in uh, Frankfurt and Cologne. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I haven't been to Cologne. I need to go to Cologne. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm dying to go there, man. Yes. Let's grab it, man. Woo! Yes. Schnitzel, right? In the pasta, right? Oh, and the pasta. Oh. Forgot about the pasta, bro. Yes. It's amazing. What an experience. I gotta say, this is awesome. Blumen Garten, so it means the garden is blooming. Obviously, there's flowers around here. The building is beautiful. Over 100 years old, this building, right? 90 years. 90 years? 90 years. Wow, 90 years. Ma Maternity Hospital. It was the first one in Blumenau, 90 years ago. And we also have this dark mustard, and that is for the sausage, right? Yes. You want some? Please. Perfect. This is a true feast. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sausages. Sausage first, why not? Yeah, and go with the white one. This is the traditional Bavarian sausage. The white one, right? It's like right? the vice, Cheers. right? Mm -hmm. Wow. A uh. little bit liquid inside, right? Yeah, no juicy. Yeah, the juicy and smoke. Smoky. Yeah, smoky. You mix this with some sauerkraut. Yeah. It's my favorite. Yes. First time I went to Germany. I actually landed in Berlin with my brother mm -hmm. and we drank and ate sausages for three days straight. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. We were, we were like kids. I was like 20 years old, bro. <laughs> wow. Mm. The best I've ever had. Yeah? Man, delicious. They know what they're doing. This is real food. Oh, God. I can't wait for the schnitzel. Wow. I love it. It's basically cutlet, right? Yes. So if you're from India, certain places, cutlet. Pork, deep fried pork, right? Mmm. Mmm. Sweet mushroom. Yes. Oh, mixed with like a little bit of that grease. Oh, God. You gotta say, this is probably some of the best German food I've ever had. And it's in Brazil. Yes. 
Seriously. So good. So good. Mm. And all this food pairs perfectly with the beer. That is why Germans drink this amazing beer. Man, so good. Too good. Yo estoy enamorado de esta comida, man. Next, we got some of the... The pasta? The pasta, yeah, let's try it. Oh, we got some of that sauce, too. I think I think best thing to do is add some of that on top. Yeah, they call it spetsly. 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 Okay. Sorry it, about my really bad German no, pronunciation. It's, it's fine, because you know what? In Albania, they call it petula. Petula. Maybe the format of a uh, flower? Small? It's similar. Like chocolate it's flower? Mm-hmm. Very cool. similar. Didn't no. know that. It's good. It's actually like... It's possible, but it's more grainy. Yeah. Just the way they cut it, mm -hmm. right? Like it's more grainy. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Different. Oh. It seems that they do with uh, uh, garlic, maybe. Oh, I don't man. know. This is like the best thing of all time, man. I, I don't want to like bash the rest of everything we ate, but this is probably the best meal we've had. Absolutely. Really mm. authentic. Mm -hmm. mm. And the mushrooms, that creamy sauce. Yeah. Oh, it's Free like milk. it's like fused into the cutlet. Yes. Oh my gosh. They don't joke around, man. No, they don't joke around. This is like mm. this is real food. I don't lie about my taste. When I taste something good, I let it be shown. You know. Wow! Look at this amazing sausage. Mm. This is like <laughs> moito moito bom. Moito bom. Mm. This sauce is, is not industrial at all. No. No way. Craft, right? This is like craft, right? Somebody made this in their house. Oh yeah. You want some of this? Yes, please. Boom. Let's eat this. Ready? One, two. Cheers. I like both. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Mm -hmm. This is the Eisenman pork leg fried. So amazing. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. My style, sorry. Oh, just break it up. Oh. Mmm. Mm. Crispy outside. Juice inside. Mm. Oh my gosh. Not salty. Not salty at all. Mmm. <laughs> Freaking crazy. The juice is flowing. Mm. The fat. Look at that, wow. so crunchy. It's almost like a mix of chicharron with the meat, you know? Because the and, chicharron doesn't have the meat. And lechon. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like German food. I, I love have to it. disagree, I love it. Yeah, I love it too. I don't know why they don't like it. Mm. Maybe they're not used to the flavor. Mm -hmm. I think it's so, it's like, it's more filling. Always very meaty. Gave me really because they're more about pork. Mm -hmm. Pork everything. There's no beef almost, you know? Mm. So good. Dude, I'm like drooling over this food. Mm -hmm. And one for seconds for sure. Mm. And the sauerkraut. So phenomenal. Hey. Good. Gross, to Blumenau. Uh, Blumenau. Great job. You've done a great job. Wow. So happy to be here. Dude, I am so happy. This schnitzel. Mm. <laughs> so good. Muito macio por dentro. Sem só crocantes. Levemente rosado por dentro. One. Well, I'm impressed of the variety of the items they have in this menu. And the price, man. Eating in the south of Brazil is cheaper than the big capitals, right? Like Rio, Sao Paulo. And the, the dish we had, uh, Spatsly, it's the main dish in the evening for dinner. You know, they have like so many options with lemon the Blumenau sausage, uh, blue cheese with nuts, uh, mushrooms, goulash. Obrigado. Thank you. Thank you. Obrigado.
Rock and roll. Where are we going next? Uh, we're going to the Villa Germanica, the German villa, right? The plaza where they we held the Oktoberfest. I love it. When you experience different cultures within a country, it's a different world. So we just crossed through the mountains to get to the other side of the city. Wow, just like lush, heat, beauty. What a beautiful place, man. It is so beautiful, man. This is the German Villa, right? Mm -hmm. Called the German Villa Park. German Villa Park? Yeah. Right here we have a lot of like skyscrapers, basically like 25 story buildings. Most of them are residential from what I noticed. Hilly, then more commercial space. Yeah. This is so this is basically the German town, the main center, right? Yeah, and that's where they held the the festival, right? The Oktoberfest. Oh, right there? Yeah. Let's go. Alright guys, so this is where they hold Oktoberfest every single October. Beautiful, but right now they have like a uh, Natal, so a yeah. Christmas Feliz celebration. Natal. Yeah, Feliz Natal. You came here for Oktoberfest, and right here. October, yeah. It's kind of like a big parade, you know, with a lot of uh, bars and restaurants and festivities, you know. It's two weeks, so like the first group, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and then the next week, so it total two weeks of party so this is like you're entering old town frankfurt right here really german i mean everything is like impeccable dude i've never been to a place like this this is like incredible so old german architecture you have restaurant the typical so typical restaurant german restaurant you have a beer garden right here the heat is getting to us it got so hot so fast all right guys so i entered a souvenir shop and they have everything that is oktoberfest but they also have a mix of stuff right here. So there's like medieval swords. This is cool though. All Oktoberfest gear. Nice. So coasters. They have glasses. Really cool German stuff. Whoa, look at this. The hats. Hats are the best. I personally like this. And this Blumenau hat with the German eagle. What do you guys think? Cool? Should I buy one? Or... But I think about getting one of these. These are cool. These are like real, like Swiss German. Uh, huh. Is that good? What do you guys think? Do I look ready? You're right. You're right. You're right. Hee hoo. <laughs> guys, I love their glassware. Look at this. It's all blooming out Oktoberfest. You won't find this anywhere in the world but here. Really, really beautiful. I mean, what a souvenir. Like this awesome one. Look at this. Blooming out Brasileiro de Cerveza. This is six dollars. Six dollars. Can't find this anywhere else in the world. So it's it's German, but it's very it's German. Swiss. Yes, people buy to to attend the festival, right? Oh, it's amazing. Usually, yeah, I like it. It's beautiful, right? What do you think for my daughters? Please, man, they're gonna be so happy. What do you think, sir? Okay. No, ciao, 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 ciao. ciao, ciao, ciao. Okay, it's cool. So I, I bought three shirts and a glass. Woo! We're Amazing. in Germany, baby. It feels like I'm walking through Frankfurt. Hey, yeah. it, it's really like a German town. It is. I mean, this was, was this a historical center? Or no, they just made this up. This is part of a uh, historical center, but this is handmade, right? Like it's a, it's a commercial villa that they held uh, this festival, this beer. There's not only Oktoberfest, but there's other beer festivals along the year, right? Doing my research, it said 1865 is when the Germans, you know, the colonists came here to this town. Here it says 1860, capital Brazil of beer. So I guess they came earlier and they became the beer capital of Brazil. Look, amazing. This is nice. Let's get a photo right here, man. Totally German, 100%. How about this weather? How about this temperature? 31. It is so hot, guys. It is scorching right now. When you walk into the shade, it's perfect. Oh, this feels good. Yes. It feels great. Correct. Basically, all it is is like restaurants, cafes, bars, Bar, souvenir slash shop. souvenir shops. Yeah, exactly. that's it. That's it. Pretty cool, though. Everything is Oktoberfest. Obviously, the whole Oktoberfest here. The only one in Brazil. Yes. That's it. Unique. People Unique. from all over Brazil come to attend this festival. It's very traditional. German architecture, right? So you'll see this type of architecture in Munich, also in Frankfurt. From what I've been, that's where I've seen this the most. Also Nuremberg, so I guess Bavaria. Bavaria is more like this. Pretty nice. Look at this. 
gorgeous. The colors, blue, red, purple, epic. So if you want to buy some souvenirs, you can do it here. You can drink, you can eat, really amazing. Now we're headed to another brewery to try some delicious beer. I mean, this is what you do here, right? You eat German food, you drink German beer, and you live life to the fullest. Let's go, only a 15 minute drive. I can't wait, I'm excited. Prost, Prost Deutschland. Let's go. We're going out to like a local brewer called Cervejaria Alles Blues. Alles Blues. Right, so, Rafa? Alles, I think it's how are you, right? Like Alles Klar, Alles Good. Alles Blau. Alles like Tudo, Tudo Blues, I don't know. I don't know German, but we can ask when we get there. After a 15 minute drive, we are here in Alles, Alles Blau, which means blue, right? Of the blue. All right, so we're inside the brewery. They have a bar area, you can eat, you can get some beers. We're going in the back. What's up, my friend? This is our man, Diogo. Hey, obrigado. Diogo was born and raised in Gramado. He's 26 years old, 25 actually. He's been working with breweries since he was 18. Awesome. So, vai fazer 26 this year? 26 in May. In May. Beleza. Eight, eight years. Eight years. So, what are we seeing right now? We're going to go in the back. We're going to see the fermentation. We're going to see some tanks. Yes. Fermentation. All the process that they make the beer. They get all their bottles. Huge. So, they have the bottling system right here. They don't do cans. They do bottles. Over here, they have. So, they're aging beer. Aging beer. Wow, very nice. I like this. This is good stuff. Whoa. Aqui temos a primeira matéria prima, o malt. Yes, this is malt right malt. here. Wow, all malt. malt. It's amazing. Este é o malt de cevada. Ele passou por um processo. So in this room, they have the bags of all the malt, and they grind it right there. Correct. Awesome. Yes. Next step. Let's go. Tinha aquele grão de malt na água. This is the four barrel system. This is where the beer is made. So we have the boiler, over here is filtration, and this is what they use right here to calculate, right? So they see moisturization, filtration, the boiler. This is where everything is done. This is the magic, right? And over there, we have the fermentation tank. So once everything is made, then it goes in there. It stays for like 10, uh, dias, come on. like 12 days. And then from there, straight to kegs, draft, Bottles. That's it. Hoje tu vai tomar uma Catarina Sour e uma e uma Session IPA. Okay, we're gonna try two different beers. I can't wait. <laughs> so here in this bar, they have like gallons of like 1,000 liters, 2,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000 liters. So remember, this is the fermentation tanks. So five times a week, they make beer. The beer goes from there to here, and then from here over to be drunk 10, 12 days later. This is amazing. So 1,000 liters. Over there, 6,000 liters. Look how massive these things are. We are tasting beer directly from the fermentation tanks. This is the best. This is the most like unique type of beer, even better than draft. You've never had beer like this before. Obrigado. Here we go, guys. Session IPA. I love the head. Really nice. Mmm, it's crisp. Oh, it's like so good. It's so light, too. Percentage? Quatro meses. Quatro meses, four and a half percent, not so bad. I mean, it's very light beer, very sessionable. That's what it means, sessionable beer, session IPA. Saúde, saúde. Saúde. Mm. Wow, very good. Very good. Light on hops. Very light on the hops, I like it. It's good, it's crisp. Qual é o outro, é o outro? A sour. A sour. I am trying a sour. Oh, maracujá. 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 Passion fruit. Fruity. Fruity. But this is passion fruit, straight up. Whoa, this is good. It's nice sour. Passion juice with a little bit of alcohol. Oh, so good. Wow. Caramba. Nossa. Fria. Woo! Woo! I am frozen. This is where they store all the kegs, and these are the these are the 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 splits. So much pequeños. These are like one six. These are the half barrels, right? Huge. So this is what they do. Like I just said, they store it and they send it out. Amazing. Oh, frío, frío, frío. Obrigado. Obrigado. Too friendly. You're too friendly. Awesome. All right, we're gonna try one beer. And we're done for the day. We have to drive to Fornopolis. 
Ok, mi amiga. Amiga, vamos a probar una cerveza. And right here we have their brand new spanking IPA. This looks really nice and crisp. It's gonna be good, right? Absolutely. Mmm. Very fruity. Wow. Very light on the bitterness. But it's a, it's a little cloudy. Not crazy hazy IPA. A little cloudy, not so crystal clear. Very nice, nice head. Mmm. Everybody loves these IPAs. These IPAs are blowing up all over Miami. IPA, 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 everybody's into it. My friends, we explored Blumenau, the beer capital of Brazil. We did an epic tour. We did basically everything you could do here. We started off at Beerland. We tried some of their beers, a stout and a Pilsen, then went to lunch at this amazing restaurant. Oh man, unbelievable food. Uh, I would say the best place to have German, authentic German food in Brazil. Yeah, people are very nice. Very German building, beer garden, you can have beer, you can have German dishes, and you can also have buffet, but at night you can have only like a la carte, A la carte, right? correct. So that's at night. Yes. Then after that we explore the Germanic town or Germanic villa. villa that is yeah. like a historical old town, right? Yeah, that's where they have the Oktoberfest, other beer uh, festivals. It's like kind of like a tourist attraction, right? Like I would say the main one. Yeah, I mean you go in there, you buy some souvenirs, you drink some beer, you eat some food, and just you know support the locals. Yeah. And then after that, we came here to Alice Blau. Alice Blau Alice Brewery. Blau, everything blue. There's so many breweries in the area. Yeah. You gotta explore at least one or two. I highly recommend it. I mean, you're coming to the beer capital of Brazil. Why not be like a true German and drink some beer? Very important. This is one of the only ones that allow guests to do the beer tasting and visit the, the brewery. Okay, because most of them are closed breweries. Or just convenience shop. Okay. Like the first one that we went, right? Right, like Beerland's so, convenience shop. This one has yeah. a, actually has a tap room. Yeah, and other ones, not because they're outside of the city, but they don't uh, allow guests to go in. Okay. So very important. Good this is the one. This is the one. And that was Curitiba. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. Would you ever go to Curitiba? Would you eat incredible Brazilian pho with a chow? If you will, please let me know and subscribe for more awesome travel content. I can't wait to go back to Brazil next time. Manaus, Belém, Fortaleza. I don't know. It's too many cities. So little time. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.